Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Ahaka Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Sodasan 0424, and VideoGamer75. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody! Thank you. I'm gonna start drinking. Sorry, lucky it doesn't have a, uh, today. I have coffee. That's okay. Ironically, in between you saying thanks and you saying that you didn't have a thing, I played my library sound clip of you clicking. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, hey, hi, everybody. Welcome to Let's Take FGO. Uh, we're back. This is episode 100. I am one of your hosts. A man denied his rank up, punished Omega. And with me, such lust for revenge. It's Lucky Face. Who? Yeah. We, there's, there's a lot of memes going around for a lot of things, which we'll talk about. So, hey, it's episode 100. By the way, that who looks great in the, uh, in the sound <laughs> clip. Awesome. It's got, a, it's got a really interesting sound. But yeah, so this is episode 100. Last week we debated on 99, which was our two-year anniversary. Would we come back and do another live episode? And then, obviously, we knew there was going to be a lot of news for anniversary four, but there was a lot of news, okay? A lot of it. Uh... And lucky you actually stayed up to watch the panel, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I did. And I uh, I caught it on the ar- on the archive the next day. But yeah, so there was a lot of things. Uh so I figured, hey, this is a big deal. This is a big deal to a lot of people in the audience, right? Like there's a lot of news here to process and get people's feedback on and see how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And you know, with it being the next week, there would have been a lot of time for people to process. So I'm like, let's do let's do another live episode. I like live episodes. I really do. Yeah. Like I said last time, you know, it's kind of counterproductive to us to do them all the time, but doing it now and then, especially when you're doing big deals, kind of like brings in the people, brings in the engagement. Everybody loves engagement. Yeah, engage. So yeah, uh, we will, let's see, uh, you're supposed to do an intro thing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, <clears throat> uh, tell me when you hit the button. We're there, we're going, again. Everyone, I hope you're enjoying Fate Grand Order, a.k.a. Four Sword Adventures. And while we here at Studio Omega like to bring you the latest in FGO-related news and memes, we will be talking about current and future events with the JP and EM version of the game, so anyone not wanting spoilers should dig their tunnels to freedom. Much dig. Such tunnel. Yeah. Alright, so, uh... Oh, yeah, we've got a few minutes. I can I can jump into that segment that involves a Kohai. Senpai! That's right, everybody. It's time for Wake the Fuck Up Senpai, a regular segment for pro tips. I say that like every week. You'd think I could say it correctly. Uh, So this is just a quick heads up. I don't really have any other pro tip you'd like news to bring you. But uh, it was a question with our pregame and other stuff. So uh, heads up, you don't have to do one of every quest to get the rewards for the round. I don't even know if you have to do a quest. But both myself uh, and other people on the server have seen evidence... That you don't have to. You still get all three rewards and the QP and everything. Eh, I still feel like for at least minimum. I don't know. I think was, I still think like minimum. I feel like I should do at least one of every quest because, um. So I guess I'll like I'll use this to springboard a little bit. But um, Lucky's been like stupid depressed for like the past five days. I want to say, and like I've I've put almost zero effort into my gacha games. I actually quit two of the ones I play. Uh, which um, ones? Um, I quit, um, Magia Record and, um, and, um, Bondori, the, uh, Rhythm Beat ones. Like, I still like them both, I really do. If ever I get a chance to get back, like, I, I feel like I have enough time in my life, I'll probably go back to them, but for right now, I'm just looking at them like, I cannot play five gacha games. I just can't do it. Well, we'll, we'll probably talk more about Magia Record yeah, on What's Up this week. I can sense, though, ha- seeing people who are still playing it post-news all the time, I can sense why maybe you decided you had to had to give it a pass. Yeah, at least for now. But even like even though I um cut myself back down to three gacha games, it's like I still haven't been putting a lot of effort. I have not putting been putting a lot of effort into them. I have um, been putting a lot of effort into probably the same three games, and uh, ooh, it's some work. I uh, yeah, I definitely could spread my time out a little bit better. And also, I'm still trying to complete Breath of the Wild, but that's a different topic. Yeah. So like. Um, so I'll talk about the other, um, gacha games tomorrow. 
But with FGO specifically, like, I haven't been farming at all. Basically, all I'm doing for the past several days is when we roll over, I do the story quest, and I do the 10 AP of each, um, of each racer, and that's it. That's all I've done. Like, I have not farmed at all. Like, I haven't bought anything, I haven't bought anything out of the second shop. I'm not too, I'm not too fussed about it because it looks like we're going through the event at a fairly good clip. Clip. So once we actually reach the end and everything opens up, you know, that's when you get the, the real true yeah. blue grinding on. Everyone gets your flex on. But at the same time, it's like, it, like, it's, it's a little disheartening because there's a lot of people who are like, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people, uh, quite a few who might be in our audience right now who's like, oh yeah, no, I'm done with like, like nine tenths of my, my, my farming now. No big. Yeah, well, part of it is because, actually, I don't know if I, I don't know if I jotted this down in my notes, but when we talk, we'll mention it now, uh, just to, to talk about it. Uh, they did actually give us the gold apple drive, so lots of people have been enjoying apples they didn't have before and are using them. Yeah. I don't have time to spend apples, and I have like 200 of them, <laughs> but still, like, yeah, I'm not as good as I could be, and we'll probably talk more about the event, because you have been playing story, right? So, we can yeah, still yeah, talk yeah. about that part, but... I've been keeping up. But, you know, I just haven't we been... We are on I've been, the... I've been putting it... Ninth right now, when we're recording this, in case you were curious, I believe it officially goes until the 20th, so, yeah, we got, like, assuming the final... We're on the final race step now for part two, so that'll probably be done by the 10th, I want to predict, based on current speed of the event, so that means you'll have, like, 10 days of just nothing to do but farm. Like, honestly, so by the way, we'll probably be sick of farming by then. Uh, by the way, if you want to understand the mood that Lucky is in right now, I got up real quick to grab my phone. Um, it's connected to this cool little magnetic cord. I'll talk about it um, tomorrow. But I disconnected it, grabbed the cord, and tried to walk back to my computer with it. And since it was plugged into the wall, that was a very short trip. I have now actually got my phone, because I should actually do some farming. But yeah, um, this is Lucky's big mood right now. I'm doing some farming while we're talking. I really shouldn't... Yeah. Because I have only played FGO today, but I've only done story so far, so I should do the other stuff. But we'll, t- well once again, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, transition to records on the throne, a regular achievement topic. I will go really quick at the beginning. Uh, I think I'd done it by last week's show. It's just we had a very busy show, and I forgot to mention it. Um, so I protected Surfer Mordred's smile because, well, you got to take him where you can get him, and uh, now uh, Summer Nobu's smile is protected. Uh, her angry, angry smile. So, <laughs> I got a bit of a preview of this before you decided to rewrite this. Lucky, go. So, this is one of the main reasons of my depression, okay? It's not the only run, but it's like, Lucky gets depressed because when it's basically a lot of shit, like, just falls on my at once and I just can't handle it. So, everyone who's been listening, you probably know that my foray into the Summer 2 Part 1 banner was... Super excellent. Like, top of the top luck. Um, well, I can't say top of the top because I didn't, like, I didn't, um, you know, get, like, double SSRs in one roll or anything. But, you know, I didn't actually have to spend any money. And I actually had a good amount left over. So, I think people can understand and forgive me when they say that I went into the part two banner really, really, really hopeful. This was a fucking mistake. This was a mistake that I should have, like, if I had a chance, one chance to go back in time to change one thing, I would go back, like, five days ago and slap the shit out of myself and say, no, don't. This is the kind of, this is the kind of, like, the, the feeling I am feeling. So, I can't remember exactly how much, but, oh yeah, I remember. I had five tickets from the month cover over, and I had 330 quarts. That's 11 10 pools, all right? Now, my biggest goal of the Part 2 banner was to get... Um, Rider Altar. That, that was the big goal. I would like, yes, I would have liked Hel- Helena and I would have liked Raiko, but I kind of figured that if I get, um, Rider Altar, those two would just come by the wayside. Cause that's generally how things do. So! This is how things started off. I spent my five tickets. On my fifth ticket, I got a Lancer Raiko. I was like, oh, goody, excellent. Go me! Nothing else. Didn't, didn't fucking bother me. I started spending my quartz. First, temple. I am drowning in fucking, what was it, King, um, what was it, King Jack Joker, whatever it is. 
I am literally drowning in these. I think I got four, like, my first ten pool. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, okay, that's cool, but, you know, I could wish I could have spiced that up a little bit. Second ten pool. I got another Lancer Raikou. I was like, oh, cool. You know, an MP2. Like, three more of those fucking old men. Third ten pool. Another Lancer Raikou. I'm like, okay, that's a little weird, but sure, why not? Also, got a John. I'm like, yeah, awesome. MP4 John. That makes me happy. Because I really do love my John. Uh, she is the corner pin of my fucking stall teams, especially like, like her, um, her, um, rank up was one I did like immediately. Because Jesus fucking Christ, super, not rank up, um, interlude is one that I did immediately. I was like, yes, give. And that was that. A few more 10 rolls later, didn't get anything special, but you know, that's the way the game plays. There's some game where you're just gonna get one crappy, um, SRC and that's it. And, um, basically, I went through all my courts, um, through that way, and I was like, huh, okay, that really wasn't, like, necessarily how I was thinking it was gonna go, but, all in all, not too bad, I mean, I got two MP2 Ryko, like, a bunch of, like, a bunch of the fucking Storm CEs, and I got MP4 John, I was like, alright, not the, not the outlook I wanted, but hey, here, you know what, I got some money, let's, let us feed the gotcha machine, I spent several hundred dollars. I think I'm up to like four hundred dollars right now, and let me let me let me just let me just let me just put this into perspective here. At one point, I had seven max limit broken copies of King Jack Joker. By the way, I I don't necessarily want to interrupt your flow, but for everybody keeping track at home, King Joker Jack is the four star CE. Uh, which was my problem on the last banner was white cruising. So the curse has been passed. That's how many of those old men I got. I am fucking done. Which I can't even use it in game right now because I just see that and I just I am imagining this flow of these fucking cards. I'm like I can't, I can't. I have been no. I'm done. I'm fucking done. But it's not done there. It's nothing there. It's not all. It's not like not all bad because fucking. I got. I think it was like in the second time I spent money, bought my 80 pack. I got another SSR. But do you know who it was? It was another fucking John! Like, ladies and gentlemen, I have achieved my first NP5 SSR, and it was, interesting enough, my first SSR. It's John. I have an MP5 John. Which in normal cases, I'd be like, that's, um, that's pretty awesome. You know, I'm happy. It's the silver lining, because I love my John. But this is not, not a John rate up. This is a summer 2 rate up. But guess what? You know, I kept spending money because, you know what, I am a man on a fucking mission. And guess what? Motherfucking rainbow sparkles! My heart, like, leaps into my fucking throat. I'm like, yes, is it time? It is not time. It's fucking Orion! Why the fuck is Orion in my goddamn Summer 2 raid up? Like, get the fuck out! By the way, just so everyone knows, we've talked about this before. This is statistically improbable. Like, that's a... 0.03% 0.03% chance each time. So Less than I'm just one in 100. So I'm like, ooh, ooh. I'm like, because now, as I said, I think I just said, um, I have an MP3 Orion. I'm like, Orion, you okay? But shrug. But here's the thing, like, as I said, I'm gonna cut this a little bit short because I don't want to ramble too much fucking more about this. But this, um, because I did roll a bunch and I got like. I got like another Medea, Medea, not Medea, um, Medusa Lily. I got like a Liz. Um, I also was able to achieve NP2 Archer Helena. I was like, hey, that's cool. No writer altar. None. None. Do you know what I got instead of, fu- instead of fucking, um, at least one writer altar? I got 11. Count this. 11 Ryko Lancers. 11 There's of so them. So many mamas. So many mamas. If wait, I had a surround wait. sound system, I would need two of them. Lucky. You what? literally got the inverse of my summer one blowout. You got so many of the SR that you were like, okay, that's cool. But uh, you didn't get the SSR. This is like me rolling three Tama Lancers. It's like I have Ada Ada and fucking surround sound times two, okay? I'm fucking done. Like, I like Raiko. I love Raiko. I like... <laughs> Like, her character makes me giggle a lot, but I am literally being ada ada mob mob to death right now, and I cannot handle this shit. I Fan literally artists, cannot. If you're out there, draw Lucky as a bunny rabbit being horribly crushed by 11 sets of Mama Raiko's titties. 
Yeah. It has to be exactly 11. <laughs> I will know. It's like, I can, like, oh, like, he can only take so much fucking Ryko before he hits his fucking limit. And that limit was passed at MP5. I had to burn six copies of a fresh so and many new. rare prisms now. <laughs> what am I gonna fucking do with them? I don't Nothing. know. <laughs> you have so many, though. <sighs> well, oh, no. Uh, Theoretically, you it could be worse. You did roll at least a rate up S SR. <laughs> yeah. I know. People be like, oh, but I didn't get anything. It's like, sometimes it's worse to get something that you didn't want than to rather get nothing at all. Oh, no. I totally understand. Because <laughs> I, I talked about this after the, the great surfer debacle of uh, 2018, where people were like, ooh, but congrats, though. And I'm like, I don't want your congratulations. This did not feel good to me. <laughs> It's like, so I'm like, like, yes, cool. I have this, I have this, um, Lancer that's, you know, probably pretty useful right here. But I didn't get what I actually wanted. Like, I didn't need, like, like, I'm not a person who, like, you know me, I don't really care about getting NP5 anything. It's like, do I have the servant? It's like, yes, good. I will love them. Raiko is probably is so fucking set on protecting my public morals and decency that she literally cock blocked me, like, Probably, I want to say, like, six times. Here. Just like, no. No, you get no, no medal. No medal. No, no medal. And I'm like, fuck! The public I decency. Oh, fuck your public decency. I'm a grown-ass man. Give me my fucking maid titties. Fuck. Down, Raiko. Uh, hey, so if anybody wants to know how I did on Banner 2, uh, I decided to cut my losses. I, I did two singles. Uh, one or three quarts each on both banners. I got fucking nothing. I think I got a reality marble or some other dumb shit in there, and I'm like, okay, that's it. I no longer feel the desire to spend quartz. Which I think is a, is a pretty fundamental difference in our strategies. When Lucky doesn't get what he wants, the gacho pisses him off. And he's like, I must roll. I'm like, uh, I feel crushing sadness inside, and I no longer want to look at this. Get away from me. So, what right now... Lucky's gonna take this anger, and I'm gonna buy one more fucking pack of quartz. One more. One more pack. And I'm gonna roll right here. I'm gonna make it quick. It's gonna be fast. Oh. <laughs> there. Hold on. The chat is blowing up. They're telling you no. <laughs> Wait, oh, no, no there's at least like, one person who said it. do it. We have, we have a do it. We have another no. There's a concern. <laughs> Yamero! Do yeah. it! Mm. I like this mad rabbit and Sagamega. <laughs> Try to save yourself. <laughs> no, I'm just reading what people are saying. Do check your bank account first. No axe, I refuse. Moments before despair, tyrants should suffer. Burn yourself to ash. Everybody, oh. raise your hands. <laughs> give him your energy. For the love of God, he's trying to save the whole damn planet from Majin Buu right now. <laughs> Okay, here we go. No, no, Nor. That's not allowed. Do not do that. I will not allow anyone Gentle to curse affection. Lucky like that. Another ending. That was one roll. Uh, do it. Imaginary element. Imaginary element. Second roll. Oh, are you fast rolling too? Jesus. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take up time. That's fair. A midsummer moment. Art of death. That was the third roll. You're getting a, well, at least you're getting a lot of non <laughs> rate up CEs. Imaginary element. That was it. Wow. Last one. Oh my. Usually something amazing happens when we roll on Mike. Oh, well, I got Ozymandias. <laughs> I'm not Golden tree. Lucky's, I'm not laughing at Lucky's pain, by the way. I'm and I got another fucking Ryko! <laughs> No. <laughs> oh. I would like to once again. I'm not laughing at Lucky. I feel like he's paid, but also holy shit, Ooh. that's forever. Somebody give me a kinetic typography on that. Twelve fucking Rikos. Why? Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Well, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Now.
the show must go on. Though that is probably one of the most soul-crushing yet amazing incidents on mic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're just blowing up with uh, with various Raiko images and suffering right now. Okay. No, right. Actually, Mike doesn't have to throw me his side because I'm spending my money. He doesn't, like... No, but expect lots of lucky odd job stories in the next coming months. Yeah. All right. So after after that big moment, I kind of want to I, I kind of want to take the audio for like a, a quick intermission, maybe cycle down a second, okay, and then come back it. with the news. We are unpaused. And uh, this I episode is a... officially going to be titled "FGO Fez Four and the Great Ryko Blow Up of 2019." Yeah, I have a hundred and eight dollars left in my bank account. I still have bills to pay. I'm dumb. Well, I'm not going to say I told you so. But there are people in our chat who technically did tell you so. <laughs> but some of them told you to do it, so uh, more responsibility, responsibility, of course, also lies on them equally. That's right, audience, you are a single moral unit. It's like the prisoner's dilemma. Okay. Um, so speaking of FGO Fez 4, uh, as Lucky stares into his empty, dead wallet, which he murdered live on camera, uh, let's talk about uh, Fate Grand Order Fez 2019, the fourth anniversary. Which is, the in-game event is actually technically still running, it'll only run until the 13th, but as far as I know, the panels and celebrations in the actual real-life festival are over. Oh, actually, I need to pull up the list of those, because we did, in fact, totally get scooped on the CEs. They announced the full list and did the memorial quests right away after we recorded last week's episode. So let me look up that, because that happened first. There were memorial quests based on the Lost Belts and the Epics of Remnant. And if you beat them, you get some summon tickets and those two CEs. Let me see if I can find those. That's the rank ups. We'll talk about that later. But uh, these fuckers. Excuse me, I gurgled a little bit there. But these guys. No, seriously. These motherfuckers. Uh, this list is hell. Let's see, where is it? Is it at the bottom? Is it at a different article? Three bronzes, that's the thing. Is that the actual link in the news? There it is. Okay, so let's see. We knew about half of them before, right, Lucky? Yeah. So let's see. I don't know who was added all, all in all, but... So the final list was... Uh, and these were all themed on different areas of Caldea Park, which were pseudo-present at the physical event. So let's see. There was Achilles, Astraea, Anastasia... I'm uh, Abigail. That's right. I blanked on her name for a second. Uh, Mozart. There was Arjuna Alter. Is that Mozart? I thought they, I feel like these are no. They're not alphabetically arranged, or are they? Who knows? Uh, there was Jean, Hans, looking dapper. Uh, there was a pretty baller uh, Salieri one, Ibaraki, uh, Areshkigal, which I think I said before I wasn't too keen on, but then I noticed a tiny detail that her hands are actually super shaking, which is adorable. She's super nervous to be here. There's a Helena, there's a Yen King, there's an Izo, there's still that Osakabahime. There's Hokusai in a maid outfit, I think that was added later. It's Consort U. There's uh, Volleyball Kets, uh, there's Oreo, there's Sanson, there's the First Emperor, there's a little Sitonai. There is Jean Alter, who is looking like she's wearing a mashup of her beach and anniversary costumes. There's, of course, uh, Super Vampire Shuten. I assume that's supposed to be Scotty, though it's really hard to tell when they're wearing a different costume, but she's got a popsicle or a watermelon or something, so I think it's Scotty. Uh, there's a freaking Kiara CE, which was real danger zone. Uh, there's Deermud, there's Tomoe, there is MHXX, because she's space. There is Provati, there is Bradamante, there is Bedivere, there is Bunyan. Uh, there's Mary, there's Martha, there's, uh, which killed me, there's fucking Mordred. Uh, and not just any Mordred, but, like, a very red Mordred. She's so red. Uh, Prince of Lan Ling, Da Vinci, and Robin Hood. So, I, this, this one really tears me up. Like, I'm like, the Mordred one is really good, though. This year, I have to pick it. It's so red. And then I'm like, fuck, what do I want to pick for the other one? Because the aesthetics of, like, the tour guide look don't really do it for me. I don't know. People can give me their opinions on that. But um, the, like, dashing musketeer da Vinci is pretty cool. But I also, uh, like I said, I really like that character detail for Arresh. 
Then again, I am going to pick the Arresh one for year three, so we'll see. We'll see in, we'll see in two years. Uh, Lucky, do you have any thoughts on which one you'd pick? Oh, God. Like, I'm struck, but, like, right now, I think my main two would probably be Kiara and Shuten still. Which are both very good. Yeah. I'm not really sure what's... Uh, she's in the palace, I guess, so she's... I don't know if it's, like, a royal thing or an attendant thing, but Kiara's got a really interesting and distinct look. And, of course, Shuten was drawn by Raita, so... Mm-hmm. All right, so that was the first thing that happened, and there's some challenge quests and stuff. So uh, you log in every day for 10 days to get a variety of prizes, which includes 11 tickets and uh, one rare prism. They just gave you a rare prism. So uh, we're really stepping up the permanent half AP. You can get permanent half AP on Lost Belts 1 through 3. Not the new fourth one, but 1 through 3. And there are new extra master missions for clearing them, so 10 St. Quartz apiece. Uh, there's also new master missions for free quests. So 10 St. Quartz for every 10 free quests. This is like the rank up one. Up to 180 cleared. Uh, and your first run of free quests will be quarter AP temporarily. I think that was only a limited time thing. But if you want to get started on that. Uh, they are doing half AP dailies and uh, triple success chance. That's probably where our server got the idea is they were planning on doing it over here. Um, so now here's an interesting one. So the weekly login is boosted on your seventh day. You'll get a new item, which I uh, forget the name of, but like it's a little faux pas, uh, which is used to enhance command codes. There's a new category in enhance, and basically you feed these to your command code that's attached to a servant card, and it increases the attack on that card by up to 500, which is neat. That's a cool little feature, and they're basically constantly coming out yet. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty good. So here's a big one. Everybody was wondering how they would make uh, summons better. Mm -hmm. So, St. Quartz summons have been refreshed. Now, after 10 single rolls, uh, this includes tickets, you get one free roll. So, 10 pulls becomes an 11th pull. And now, if you do a 10 pull, uh, you get 11 pulls. You get 11 items in your in what was formerly a, tenth, a 10 pull. So, yeah, you... Um, I don't... Because it's translated, I don't know what the exact reset mechanics is. I think it has to be 10 single summons in a row to get your 11th. Uh, and if you, like, summon somewhere else or the banner ends, you have it resets. I'm not sure. I don't know if people have uh, have actually experimented with it or not, but yeah, so you get an extra summon, basically. You get uh, one extra for every 10. And also, the uh, rate up of SSR pickups have been slightly improved. It used to be 0.7, we talked about that earlier. It is now 0.8, so it's a very slight enhancement. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works if you... I don't know if that splits evenly to 0.4 if you have like two SSRs on rate up, they, I didn't really talk about that or announce that, but for single rate-ups, that's what it is. We got some animation updates. Uh, these are pretty neat. Medea, Lily, and Lubu get animation updates. Pretty fun. Uh, we're doing a lot of going back and updating old units this year. Okay, so your streak does stay. Interesting. Uh, let's see. So, here was another big one that shocked people. Um, actually, if you uh, want to see a little bit of this, uh, Lucky uploaded this on his own YouTube channel, and I made a post about it. I told everybody to do their homework. Uh, about the reaction to the new Bronze Servants. That's right, for the first time since Bunyan, uh, who is the, uh, the only other Bronze Servant added since launch, we have added new Bronze Servants. There are seven of them, and there are seven core classes. Funny how that works. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we'll ever get Bronze Extra Classes someday. Maybe. We'll see in year five. Um, so I'm going to list off all of them, and I'll kind of describe what they do, and we can talk kind of back and forth about them. Mm-hmm. I assume since you've been uh, busy dying, you haven't necessarily looked too deep at what they do, Lucky? No, I know who they are, but that's about it. All right, so uh, we've got uh, C, that's one star saber. Jason, he's in now. Uh, Jason is, is hilarious. Global Phantasm is hilarious. Yes. Uh, so n theoretically, fluff-wise, this is him like summoning all the Argonauts, which would be super cool and broken. Uh, but in-game, it summons specifically Herc, Medeal, uh, Lily, and Adelante. Uh, who launch a wave of attacks at the enemy, but Adelante kicks uh, Jason into the way first. That's basically all Jason does. Uh, I think it's his buster animation is Herc throws him in a fucking fastball special. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, Jason ju is just suffering, um, but he's got a really interesting kit. He's a support saber. Like, he's got a an arts AoE noble phantasm, uh, which is probably good for chaining. Uh, but his skills are basically the starting Mystic Code skills. He has a very good, mind you, targetable heal with a debuff cleanse with a four-turn cooldown at minimum. So it's pretty robust. It's like 2k healing. 
Uh, he has a targetable evade, and then he has a special charisma. So he, by default, gives everybody attack up. But if the target is an Argonaut, they get extra bonuses, which is cool. So he's he's got a very interesting niche support. Uh, so here's something that stunned a lot of people. We have Uncommon. This is two-star Archer Paris, as in Paris of Troy. Um, some people um, have been confused by this. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, they were not sure if Paris was supposed to be a gender flip. No, Paris is just a Shota. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Riri was not on the panel when they announced this, but I'm sure wherever she was, she died. <laughs> uh, but yes, so, uh, Paris is a new single target archer, I believe it's quick. Got a little bit of a special trait damage. His first skill basically strips an enemy's buff, and if you remove a buff, you slap a trait on them, which his Noble Phantasm then does bonus damage to. So, uh, for a bronze, he can hit pretty hard, but if you're not facing enemies that use a lot of buffs on themselves, it's kind of useless. Uh, other fun facts about Paris. Uh, you see that sheep with him? Uh, that's Apollo. Hiding as a sheep. Uh, so Paris is literally reverse Orion, uh, where Apollo is the one who is a, a tiny fluffy guy hanging out. That's also why Paris is a Shota, because that is Apollo's personal preference. Everybody can talk about how Apollo is a uh, god of culture. Uh, so sh- shocking the fuck out of me, uh, uncommon lancer Gareth blowing everybody's yeah. mind. You thought they were going to steal your wallet with this one. No, she's free, which I love. Yes, it's uh, Gawain's younger sister and Mordred's older sister. Uh, everybody's uh, favorite hands, Gareth. Uh, she is a pretty heavy-duty tank lancer. Uh, so she has, like, a taunt. She has a guts and uh, a pretty good defense up on her taunt. And she also has an interesting skill where she gets a attack buff when she is hit which is super cool for a few turns. So basically, you have her tank damage, you have her, like, reduce the damage and guts, and then she strikes back with her NP, which is Pierce Invincible, so it's pretty reliable damage. So she seems pretty fun. And also, she is adorable, in case you forgot. Look at those blush stickers. So that's super fun. Um, but also, I just want to say, even though these guys are bronzes, they've done a lot of work on them. Gareth has a shitload of voice lines. Which you would expect from another round table, but like she has a lot, which is cool. Uh, I hope they they backpatch other characters. Uh, so this guy was actually previewed in the Mayho residence, but we've got common writer uh, Bartholomew Roberts, Black Bart. So this guy's really interesting. He has a lot of different buffs. Um, he can do like NP, attack, card, trait damage, and stuff. Um. But he's got an AoE Noble Phantasm that does bonus damage to, get this, bronze, excuse me, bronze level enemies. So oh. he is the ultimate trash clear writer, and he's a pirate. Yar. Uh, so we got, here's another interesting one, uh, Uncommon Caster uh, Chen Gong. So uh, Wad Arco did draw a servant this summer. <laughs> uh, so Chen Gong's super interesting. He appeared in Lost Belt 3 as kind of a background character, but... Uh, He's got a really interesting fusion of support abilities. He's got, like, he's got Emia Assassin's Scapegoat, so he can throw a taunt on another character. He's got Waver and Sima Yi's, uh, Rene's team defense buff. And then he's got a very focused down version of Merlin's hero creation that only works on Berserkers, a.k.a. works on Lubu. Uh, but his noble phantasm is hilarious. It's basically Stella for other people. Uh, he shoots an arrow that explodes real huge and probably does shitloads of damage to the enemy, and then somebody else in your party is sacrificed. This bypasses instant death resistance, by the way, so he can do it to first a son. So yeah, there are a shitload of Chen Gong memes right now. Uh, but yeah, he's going to revolutionize farming, I think. Uh, once again, blowing everybody's mind, because she was actually in the Lost Belt trailer. Uh, common assassin, one-star assassin, Charlotte Corday. Uh, who is an actual famous assassin from the French Revolution. Um, uh, what was her? Like, she was the angel of assassination. Yeah, that's what I they called her. They called her the angel of assassination, which is why she has a little weird angel ghost thing with her, a little Pac-Man ghost, yeah. because people literally called her that. So, it's fate, urban legends and shit. Um, also, uh, according to actual uh, historical photos, yeah, she actually did have the brass, yo. Uh, yes, um, actually, elements of her costume are inspired by uh, multiple artistic depictions, which is interesting when they get to draw mm-hmm. and stuff. Also, uh, good for that guy. This is drawn by uh, Pavardi and Boudicca's artist, um, who, as mm-hmm. you may remember, lots of people 
unnecessarily shit on for Pavardi's art. Uh, so he's still doing stuff. That's good for him. High fives. Yep. Um, so Corday's really interesting. I feel like a lot of people like her immediately. Um, I will say this. I will counter some things if you haven't seen. Um, she is not, despite the knife, she is not Yander. Uh, if anything, I would describe her as, like, she's smart. She's well-read. That's one of her things is she loves reading. Um, she's more of a, a, a murder airhead. Like, uh, her noble phantasm is that she stabs, she just stabs the shit out of you. Uh, but she's, like, super innocent and calm the whole time. That's why she's called the Angel of Assassination. Which, by the way, this is backed up by historical evidence. Uh, she was executed by everybody's favorite, uh, terrible sad boy, Sanson, uh, who in his diary noted that she was exceptionally calm and brave the entire time, uh, while she was in incarceration. Yeah, if I remember, her big thing is she assassinated one of the revol- major revolutionary heads, if I remember correctly. Yes, she walked up to him in the bath and slit his throat. Just took him out. Um, in what was investigated that she had to be part of a criminal conspiracy, right? Nope. She just decided one day, I'm going to kill that guy. I don't like what's <laughs> going on here. I'm going to take him out. Uh, and she did. And that's basically what her skill set is like as a servant. Her NP removes evade. Uh, and she has Pierce Invincible, uh, and she will just stab you. Um, she has uh, a lesser version of Dante's Iron Determination. That's how hardcore this chick is. Uh, also, add her to the list of bronze assassins who could maybe possibly kill Gil. <laughs> that's a, that's a long-running discussion in, in our community anyway, is if Matahari could get Gil, which we might have to have some debate on sometime, but I'm sure people will bring it up, but the the underlying question is, well, she could probably hack him with her noble phantasm. She can't really do anything after because she's Matahari. What's she going to do? Tickle him? Uh, but uh, it's actually explicitly noted that uh, the more you try to use mystical powers to figure out if Charlotte is a threat, the less of a threat she looks to you. Like, if you use Eye of the Mind or other magic powers, you reality tells you this girl cannot possibly be trying to kill me. So it's very interesting. And uh, also, uh, astonishing everybody, Uncommon Berserker, Salome, from the Oscar Wilde play and also the Bible. Uh, she demands Famous the head of John for... the Baptist. Yep, that's what her noble phantasm covers. Yeah, um, so she is a arts berserker, which is really interesting. We don't have a lot of those. I think literally Vlad was the only other guy with an arts note NP. Uh well, that does damage anyway. There's a couple that, uh, like Caligula and Nightingale have arts, but they are support. So mm-hmm. uh, she's single target also, I think. Uh, and she does a kind of cool curse thing, but also uh, she's got some really interesting skills. Her third skill is the Dance of the Seven Veils, which is what the what she's famous for in the Oscar Wilde play, where a lot of her characterization is drawn. Uh, which, is, by the way, in case you don't know, the Dance of the Seven Veils is a dance where you show up with seven veils... And you end the dance with no veils, in case you're curious about Salome's character. Uh, but that is a really interesting thing where you get a pretty big heal for seven turns, and at the end of it, your team gains 100% NP charge, but she removes her own defensive buffs every turn for those seven turns, so she's really hard to keep alive in that moment. Uh, but wow. you can do a lot of shenanigans with her. Uh, but also, she's uh, crazy, but also extra thick. So she is also <laughs> very popular. But no, seriously, she's like Keo levels of bad news. She'll fucking steal your head. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I can't remember who it is, but basically she was in love with this guy. And she's like, oh, well, yeah, maybe I'll love you if you get me the head of John the Baptist. And she went out and fucking did it. And yeah, the guy was like, uh, I think her mother tells her, hey, I need the head of John the Baptist. So she dances for her stepdad and he's like, I'll give you one request. And she's like, I want the fucking head of John the Baptist. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. Fuck. I said I'd do literally anything. Well, I guess I gotta. Um, yeah. And in the play, she's famous for kissing the severed head. Yeah. Which is what her character, like I said, what her characterization is like in FGO. Uh, fun Salome danger fact. You see those other skulls she's wearing? Those are previous masters from previous Holy Grail Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's, uh... If I remember, uh, she, she died because I think, um, for... Someone else, I think it was one of their interpretations, um, it, she spurned her gift and said, like, and she, like, offered up her own head 
can't remember. Her. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting myths, but she's a she's yeah. an interesting character, yeah. and I'm glad that people like her. I think she's also done by the same artist as Da Vinci, hence the extra thick. Uh, mm. But all of these characters are great. They have really for bronzes for free to play units. All of these guys have crazy skill sets. Um, like like I said, like uh, Gareth's skills are basically a best of George and uh, Leonidas. Uh, Chen Gong has phenomenal SSR skills. You know, like I said, Charlotte has her own version of uh, Dante's Iron Determination. It's it's super interesting. Um, and we might talk more about these guys as time goes on or when they come back to us. Yes, Lirte gets it. Uh, where was I? So uh, this is a new special function called Super Revival. Um, it's a special button in Enhance. You can do it once per account. Uh, and some people are going to have to explain this to me better. But basically, you can... It doesn't put them to their max level, but you can max ascend a servant for free once per your account. You have to do it before November. Yeah, it lasts for 90 days. And then that's it. Boom. Just free level ups. Free ascension. No materials required. Ignores QP and mat costs. Yeah. So it's it's a pretty good breakthrough. You only get one, but you can only use it for a limited time, right? So they're like, don't hoard it, which I like. Sorry, I got a little skeezy there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, we have a new store CE, which I have to look up what it does, but you don't care what it does because it's fucking phenomenal. It's Detective Foams, uh, aka world's cutest detective, Detective Foams. <laughs> yes, it's a uh, faux cosplaying as Sherlock. Complete with pipe. I did not spell detective correctly. Oh, all right. No, they don't have any of it yet. Grand Order Wiki's lagging way behind. So I don't I don't know what it does off the top of my head, but I'm sure the audience can tell us. Yeah. I had to pause there too, below my nose. Uh there's bonus inventory in Da Vinci Shop. Okay, so it's QP and bond up five percent, and then I assume uh it's like fifteen percent or whatever it is when you pick it on somebody else's friend list. Okay, so it's it's just QP and bond overall. Interesting. Alright. Still good. Uh so you you want this, but also it's adorable, so you want this anyway. Uh, there was 90 cent courts for the stream. There was a very interesting thing where Gudiko showed up and they threw balls at, uh, pumpkins. And actually, after I talk Wait. about all the news, I want to talk about the whole FGO Fez yeah. overall, because we watched quite okay. a few streams. Yeah. Uh, so that was I that. Um, man, but you got it. Yeah. Uh, GSSR Lucky Bag. So it's, uh, 15 cent courts again for two pools. You have limited knights plus extras and cavalry plus... Alter Ego as the other one. Uh, pretty interesting. And basically, it's all limited servants, but the brand new servant who we'll talk about in a second uh, in the two pools. So you get a narrower pool depending on what you're shooting for. Kind of interesting. Still 15 St. Quartz. Uh, no, we did not get Pick Your Free SSR yet. They're probably saving that one for number five. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see what they do. The... Honestly, this is another thing I want to mention that for the fourth anniversary of both Nasu and uh, Kano-san, a.k.a. Nissan, uh, did interviews with Famitsu, which have been translated. You can find them floating out there, the whole thing. Uh, and they said lots of super interesting things. Uh, Kano seems like a really great game director. Like, he uh, he immediately wanted to bring in the back button. Uh, he wanted to do lots of other quality of life stuff. He really likes when servants actually get a chance to like shine on their own and kind of make you feel that kind of stuff. Um, he points out that sometimes the the like boss battles are hard, right? But they give you a really strong impression of those servants. Um, so th- think about all the hard fights you had in part one. Like everybody fucking remembers Gawain, right? Everybody yeah. remembers him. So uh, he has some interesting thoughts about that, and just in general, it's good. And Nasu talks a lot about story stuff and planning stuff and research stuff. Like, he actually went to Las Vegas to research the new summer event and lots of other stuff. And also, I'm pretty sure that you don't need to worry about that thing from last year where people were like, oh my god, he's gonna make us feel absolute despair and turn off the servers after part... No. No. Um, Even if he felt like that back then, and that was an inexact translation, I'm sure, uh, this is Nasu, and like, so he's... He's writing notes for predictable stuff, so... I think the way he said it, there's like an A and a B possibility. There is, they want the story for part two to feel like it's conclusive to itself. Like you got a complete story and you could either come back for more or you could say, 
I'm done and leave satisfied. People won't say they're done and then they leave satisfied, but that's just because it's how people are. Yeah. But the storyline will feel like that, hopefully. That's his intent. But he's already planned for after that. They have basically sketching out there's either the A type or the B type, which is A is continue this FGO story from where part two ended, and then B type is exploring the world outside of the actual FGO original type story. I don't know if they're going to do a mix, if they're going to pick one or the other. I kind of just for the sake of simplicity hope they go with the A. I know that like B could lead to more interesting stories, but that also means they don't make a new app and I have to roll new servants. I so, do not yeah. want. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm I'm kind of like anything where I'd have to st- if I had to like completely quit FGO and start something new, I feel like as a consumer I'm not for that. But yeah, that's just, you know, investment. Um also they uh they talked a lot about how they're like uh, here's a, here's a heads up, by the way, if you're playing JP, um, there's going to be an update in September, I think, or later this month, they're going to switch to Unity stuff. If you have certain Intel chipsets in your phone, you're not going to be able to run FGO. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you're playing NA, we're still a little ways away from that, so hopefully nobody has to buy a new phone anytime soon. Oh. Just keep it in mind, they're doing it, and they're doing it because they want to reduce load times, and they want to reduce, like, all that other stuff. They're trying to get the game more stable and more streamlined. Um... Also, in this interview, Kano clarified that they added Prison Tower to their Prism Shop because they wanted to make sure people could get a feel for Dantes, because he's actually in the story a whole shitload. That's true. Um, and at the moment, they're not planning on doing that with any else, because actually running old events is, like, rough on the code, because some of those events are so old now. But he also said that they are actively looking at a way to get old welfares to new players. So they are working on that. We don't know what, that, what form that takes yet, but they are actively working on that aspect which is neato neato burrito uh so <laughs> as a special tie-in to fgo fez uh episode zero of babylonia launched uh and it was downloadable in app uh yeah it, that's weird it required like 250 me- megabytes but if you were in japan you could or if you were playing jp anyway you could just download the fucking episode which was cool uh stateside they put it on funimation plus which confused some people uh, hopefully as we get closer to the release, they'll maybe, like, put it out as a downloadable app, but, yeah, um, I don't know, you said that you, you haven't been watching a lot of stuff, did you watch episode zero, Lucky? I did. Okay. I employed, um, Woodcraft. Uh, as did many people were unfortunately forced to, because it was a yeah. very, it was a very weird licensing thing. Yeah. Um, it, interestingly enough, um, speaking of, like, immediate, they actually, during the stream, they played episode zero. But it, since it was for the um, live audience only, they actually paused the stream while everyone watched it. Ah, oh, neato. That's so. Was, that's okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Also, Lucky has just shown me the thumbnail, which is perfect. Okay. Nope. That's what I've been working on. That's why I've been up so quiet. That's great. I hope you like smiling small. Mm-hmm. And hope, hopefully, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, I know, hopefully I, that Helena one doesn't doesn't get us in trouble. Yeah, we can, we like, can fix like, it later mm, if it doesn't work. But we'll yeah, we'll, we'll take the shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that was cool that they've done that. This is basically like this is basically like Case Files episode zero. Um, it's not required probably, but it shows off a lot of stuff. Uh, everybody's soul was crushed because there's a lot of Romani in episode zero. It's, um, the protagonist is almost not in it at all. It's, it's like 50-50 Mash and Romani. Yep. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting. You also get to meet Marsbury. He's in it. Uh, he looks like if Olga and Romani did the fusion dance, for probably obvious reasons, but still. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, I'm actually kind of glad they did this because it let us get a preview of the animation. There's actually, like, at least one big action scene in there. Uh, and it looks pretty good, which I was I was oh, yeah. astonished by. I'm like, ooh, wow, they're making this look really good. So, uh, hopefully, if they like portion out their budget correctly, or if Delightworks and Aniplex were smart and just wrote them a fucking unlimited check, because with all their fat stacks of gotcha cash, which Lucky has just contributed large amounts to, uh, you probably uh, funded a whole anime episode uh, in there somewhere. Probably. Uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully they can pull off a really good look. And I'm I'm very happy because this kind of like, like obviously we were going to watch it anyway, but yeah. watching the episode zero, I'm like, ooh, this is pretty good. No, they're doing, they're doing good stuff here. There's a tiny bit of Da Vinci action in there. 
Uh, and it's just, it's really impactful. And I think I'm kind of a little bit like, ooh, that kind of takes the bite out of, uh, out of maybe one of Camelot's big reveals. But otherwise, there are sections for like each singularity as kind of a, f- a flashback, and uh, which is good. Like each, I guess I say, main heroine like gives us a few lines. I'm yeah. Like, ooh. Uh, like Jean reads the section on Orleans talking about stuff, and then Nero talks about some stuff, delivering a lot of the the potent lines from those those segments, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, and I like it a lot. It has a good feel. Uh, also speaking of animation, I didn't put this in my notes. That fucking fourth anniversary CM dude. Oh my god, it's so amazing. It's it's real high budget, and it looks so cool. First of all, Mash is fucking Captain America. She throws her <laughs> shield, and Okada surfs on it. But just, yeah, it was really high-quality animation. Showed off lots of people. Uh, Summer Martha punches the shit out of a Jotun, and it's super cool. Like, it's super tight. And just, it looks and feels really good. Pen- rem- Go for it. There's a, there's a pen like, I'm always gonna remember. Yeah, there's a piss segment. I was just like, the, I like the moment where it basically puts on the perspective of the fucking ball as it's flying. I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah, no, there's a lot of, like, really high-quality animation in there. Um... It reminds me of, I think this was exactly one year ago, but the Essentials of Fate trailer, like, yeah. it gives me those kind of feels like, oh, wow, you just picked the best possible way to represent this. Um, And apparently, I want to say that I heard that this was played in Shibuya Square. Like, they played oh. this on, like, big screens in Tokyo as an ad, which I'm like, whoa. You're not wrong. Well, uh, no, I think money. it was just, yeah, it's, it's real big. It's a big deal. Uh, let's see. So that's the most of the animation stuff. Um, there was a very brief PV for the Camelot movie, but you didn't really learn anything new. It's just some stuff. Hey, there's a skull in the desert. Oh, check out this dude with a silver arm. They what, played what, what? their rendition of the Camelot map theme, which is super sad and stuff, and that was it. It was just a reminder, hey, we're still doing it. Yep, still doing it. Uh, so uh, I actually, because that got a lot longer since I wrote it, let's flip these two last blue bullet points. So, special summon banner, running from 8.4 to 8.18, uh, and this is a uh, new SSR writer, Da Vinci Small, and a rotating rate-up campaign for Lost Belts and Epic of Remnants, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so, I, I gotta be honest, I have, I have slightly conflicted thoughts about this. On the one hand, I don't think it's as bad as Scotty, because um, Scotty was very clearly the, oh, we just accidentally backed up our story campaign into our anniversary, so... Let's just be super lazy and put the put the character that literally all other Lost Belts have put on the second part banner as our anniversary servant, right? Yeah. That was a that I I have consistently said that that's that felt pretty lazy to me. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not as bad as that because Da Vinci um, Small was not in the game as playable. That said, I still felt kind of like as an SSR, this was a little bit of a, a softball. That said, well, yeah, because you gotta look at um, FGO Arcade, where the Venti Chan Small is a welfare. You just get it for free. That said, so... they did improve her over her special welfare version, um, yes. and she has different uh, ascensions now in costumes, so there's, like, Maid and Ice Skater. I think her Inner Noble Phantasm is different, too. Yes, it's different. She doesn't use the prototype Shadow Border, because Arcade is not at Part 2 yet. She... Drives your actual space time APC, which is pr- it's a pretty cool animation. Like they put a lot yeah. of work into her. It's just obviously they put enough work to make her different. And I wonder if maybe the FGO and the FGO arcade teams are a little bit different, and maybe they don't yeah, necessarily probably. talk. Um, so like it's a little bit lazy, and it's a little bit like ooh, that kind of sucks because that means I gotta roll for freaking small Da Vinci right before some other shit, and right after some other shit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, she's a really interesting and cool servant, and, uh, she's super great. Uh, I joked about this, uh, somebody, uh, I think it was a while ago, but I think it was Rini said in a post to somebody that, um, Da Vinci Small is wearing, uh, Heelys to escape her feelies, <laughs> uh, which I replied, no, uh, she's wearing Heelys to steely my money. She's just gonna run away with my wallet, little scamp. Shame, shame. Uh, by the way, my wallet's super in danger. I tweeted that after they previewed Summer. Uh, but so, before we get into talking about that, uh, rank up 11, which is almost over. Unfortunately, they weren't fast enough for us to cover all seven of them, but uh, we can cover some of them. 
So this is uh, like most anniversaries are. They're double stacked. Uh, every day is two servants. They actually announced the rarities this time, which was good. Um, and it was all golds and silvers. So I'm going to kind of run down them so far. Uh, so on the first day, Altera got her tactics upgraded to Scourge of God. This gives her better scaling on her uh, NP increase. And it lasts three turns now, which is great. It also removes all enemies' defense buffs. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Romulus got his natural body upgraded to Roman Wind. It increases his heal scaling and also gives him 20% NP gauge. By the way, you will immediately start noticing, hmm, there might be some themes here. Second day was Medusa Lancer, uh, who got her Siren Song upgraded to Ephemeral Sister, which increases the chance of her charm, and it reduces the enemy's quick card resistance, and also her cooldown got shorter, which is good. Um, There are a couple of charms which got fixed here. And uh, Gorgon got a skill upgrade. Her Monstrous Strength got upgraded to Huge Monsters Outrage. Uh, it lasts longer. Now instead of being, I think it was, was it two turns or one turn? It's now four times two turns. And it increases her Buster Card's critical start gather rate, which is really good because that's what Gorgon was kind of missing in her kit, was her own ability to gather star weight, because uh, Avengers are usually really bad at that. Uh, so that that helped her a lot. Day three. There are two writers in this. Golly gee willikers, I wonder who they are. Um, spoilers, It's it's Alexander. Uh, Iskander got his tactics upgraded to military domination tactics, which is basically, it's got the same scaling and length increase that Altera does, and his increases all allies' critical damage for three turns. So I that's pretty good. I they didn't call it world domination, like the video game sure he likes. Uh, they might. You never know. This is just a, this is just a rough translation from Japanese, and Albert's a huge nerd, so. Um, but Alexander also got his charm upgraded to Fair Youth Thunder, which, uh, increases the charm chance and removes the single target enemy's buffs. So we've got a lot of buff stripping in there. And then on day the 4th, Medea Lily got her skill upgraded. Her uh, ephemeral love got bumped to EX, which uh, before that increased how much an ally got healed for. Now it also uh, increases that ally's buff buff removal resistance for three turns, and its cooldown has been drastically decreased. So uh, makes her want to hang out with Consort U, I guess, the other four-star story lock. And uh, Fumo Kotaro got an upgrade. Uh, his Suspicious Shadow got upgraded. It now applies buff block to all enemies one time, which is phenomenal, and decreases the enemy's defense in addition to, I believe it was decreased their debuff resistance. Uh, so this is why I said that I was punished earlier. Day, what was it, five? Day five. There's a three-star rider and a five-star saber in here. Oh, golly gee willikers. Altera already got a buff. Is it time for Mordred to finally get her instinct fix? Is it? No. Uh, Nero Bride got upgraded. Now her Stars for the Sky not only increases your NP gain, but gives you a little bit of NP gauge, which technically, I think, versus other servants of the same rarity was like a little something she needed, but I wouldn't have put it as high priority. But uh, I'm pretty sure she got her buff because the three-star rider was Boudica. That's right, Boudica got buffed. Um, her Vow to the Goddess got upgraded to Empress of Victory. It now targets all allies, so all allies gain up to 60% uh, Roman damage, and also increases all allies' critical damage for three turns. Not necessarily the direction I would have gone with her, but it does help her be more of a support by letting her spread it out to the team. I actually thought of joking about if she would spread the trait damage to other characters, um, but I don't think I said it out loud, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pull it. Called it. But yeah, that's pretty funny. Boudica makes other people angry at Romans. So, and then the most recent one, day the sixth. Um, so this everybody, there was a four star ruler in this pack. Everybody was like, it's gotta be Summer Martha, right? There's no other four star ruler that needs a buff. And it was, but some people, because I pointed out immediately after the Boudica Bride thing, I was like, well, it looks like we're doing them in pairs. By the way, if you're curious, um, I don't think there's a big connection between Kotaro and Medea Lily, but uh, they are both in this anniversary event. Kotaro is, was mentioned as a future summer costume, which we'll talk about, and Medea Lily just got a animation update. So they're like both being worked on right now. Uh, so there's a five-star assassin. A lot of people are like, who could this be? Uh, and I said, Who's a, who's a five-star assassin connected to to Martha? It could be MHX. She's also technically a summer servant. Lo and behold, an upgrade for MHX. 
Uh, her fire support uh, got upgraded to fire support XEX. Um, its cooldown is reduced, and it also decreases all enemies' defense, so that's pretty good. Gives her a little help. Uh, and uh, Martha actually got her NP upgraded. Uh, I don't know by how much. Let me see if they've got this data. But basically, the amount of defense down she deals is uh, increased, and the amount of damage she deals is increased. So she punches a little bit harder now. The last two saying. will be a five-star rider and a four-star saber. And everybody is super confused. Um, the only thing I think I can guarantee is that it will probably be related, because that seems to be what they're going for with these sets. Like, they've unnecessarily buffed servants just so they could make them interconnected. And also, all of these characters are from part one. So I think it's part one buffs only. I could be wrong on that, but it seems to be the direction they're going. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people are like, is it Saber Altar and Maid Altar? We'll see. That would probably be pretty good. Um, having just done Wanted on Maid Altar, which none of you fucking watched. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. 500 of you watched it, but it was noticeably smaller than my Nero Wanted, which is always interesting because I see those numbers, you motherfuckers. I watch the analytics. Um, but having just done that on paper, I don't think that Maid Altar is really that, that quote unquote bad. It just does seem that she does not necessarily like she has some really interesting things that she does, like she can reduce your skill cooldowns with one of her skills and stuff. Um, she's got a little bit of like spam potential. Her her third skill is a three turn cooldown one time quick buff, which is super interesting. But nece- I also don't think that necessarily she like shines super bright in any area. So it's kind of like eh, you know, she's interesting. Uh. But a buff could be interesting. Also, I, I, I called this earlier. I was like, hey, it could be a Camelot. Because, uh, hey, guess who's, guess who's a five-star rider? Oz, who's a four-star saber. Uh, hopefully it's Gawain and not Lancelot, if they were going to do that. But yeah. This is a random saying. Maeve and Maeve. That would break the first the first part rule. But it could be. That would be funny. But yeah, so we're we're still speculating on that, and I'm sure by the time this episode actually comes out to the public, everybody will know. But uh, also shown on the stream and actually posted elsewhere, um, this is something Kano actually talked about in his interview, was they want to do less events which are um, require story completion. So they, they want to do more events that you only have to beat Fuyuki to play. Um, they are going to be mindful about spoilers for that, but they... Like I said, they want to like actually uh, keep a better eye on that. So uh, the other thing he said is that he wants to give people more lead time before big story releases come out because those are going to be locked, right? Yeah. So to uh, show this off, they announced a large time zone and offered a preview of Lost Belt 5. Coming this winter, uh, which immediately yeah, caused doing too. immediately everybody caused to be like, "Yo, uh, winter is coming." They say uh, this this winter, but I'm pretty sure that means like early next year. Uh, and I think we did some math on this. Uh, much like last year, there's probably some free space in like November or back half of December. Um, similar to how Lost Belt Three was released, or um, London, for example, was released. Uh, it is a it is a broad strike zone. Yeah. Also, I don't know if that uh, Winterfest takes a lot of place in a lot of areas in Japan, but yeah. So like, I don't know. I it would be kind of sad if it wasn't this year. That would mean they literally only did one plot release this year. Um, I know they're working harder and making them more cohesive, but it's it still would be a little sad. I think it's going to be like late December or something, or yeah. like late late November, because they've got the they've got the they've got the time frame. Um, but the interesting thing is there was a little, there's a little tiny bit of a, uh, preview video, but also they showed off some key graphics of several servants. Um, so this basically confirms Lost Belt Rider and Lost Belt Lancer. Canis will be in this, uh, this Lost Belt. They're both in the preview here. I'm really hoping because other than Sigurd, they've been really nice about, uh, the Cryptor servants that Canis will not be a... SSR uh, limited. She's not the Lost Belt King, so I think it's okay, but we'll have to see. 
uh, how that shakes out. But also we have whoever the fuck that writer guy is that people still don't know. But they make a big deal out of the stick he has. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, but we also have some interesting ones. We've got uh, a couple very Grecian-looking servants with their sandals. Got laurel wreaths and stuff. <laughs> some people are wondering if this is like real Apollo, uh, the guy on the bottom left there. Uh, on the top right, there's some sort of waifu character. She's wearing a crown. She's very red and white. I'm sure that lots of people will be rolling for her. And then we got this guy in the center um, wearing his fucking Metal Gear Rising black robot armor. <laughs> Looks like he's gonna he's gonna tell me about Nano Machine Son or uh, Rules of Nature. <laughs> uh, and we know from some possible data mines that's been uh, uh, dialogue is accidentally or or um, uh, pro- hidden profiles have accidentally been data mined from some of the new bronzes. It appears that Odysseus will be appearing in the Lost Belt as a character. I'm kind of wondering if he's black armor because that was one of Odysseus's many many things was. Pretending to be other people, you know, being no one to the Cyclops, etc. Mm, yeah. um, so that, I think, could be similar to how um, Junico works, where her first ascension is just her hiding in a statue, pretending not to be there. Or um, Medjid, uh, Summer Nido. I'm, I'm wondering if they might not pull that off, but it's interesting. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, also, I think based on the... Well, yeah, Zeus, I, I think we... Uh, people are talking about Zeus is going to be a major character, Um we, I think we knew that already because in dialogue, uh, what I may says, basically the equivalent of "I'm bros with Zeus," so like we knew he was going to be a character anyway. Yeah. So like that, that I don't think it will astonish anybody, but we'll see if they do anything really interesting there. Uh, also, based on trailers and stuff, like the Cryptor trailer and things, I think we should be on the watch out for True Orion, um, not Artemis Orion, but because there's a guy with like stars in his belt and a big club, so. Uh, uh, to answer that question, Lothram, uh, Zeus will be a huge asshole, because that's how he is. We had a big discussion of Greek deities the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, most things are Zeus's fault, or Hera's fault, for trying to get back at Zeus. Yeah. Uh, I could speculate a lot about this, but we're already in over an hour, and we're still in the first half of the show, or the first half of the notes, so I won't, I won't go on too length. You know, there's not a lot to be gained from, like, super baseless... Uh, speculation without too much detail, like, because there's a million different ways they could take it, and I don't want to, like, I don't want to risk anybody getting, like, upset or anything because, oh, they didn't do it the way I thought they would. Don't, like, don't stress about it. They've got a lot of different ways they could take it at these points. We'll see what happens come winter. So, uh, this was not actually, uh, or did they show it again? They might have, they might have shown, no, that's right, I don't think they showed it on the FGO uh, anniversary panel. They showed it on the uh, creator talk panel. Yeah. But, uh, Summer 4 was previewed, uh, as, as is apparently now the trend. Uh, they have confirmed that it is set in Las Vegas, in America. Nasu literally went there to do yeah, research. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, by the way, I would like <laughs> to point out, that means Nasu's been on the Strip. There's some very interesting hotel casinos on the Strip, like, oh, I don't know, Caesar's Palace, the Luxor, Excalibur, and several others. So, knowing Type Moon... I'm expecting lots of jokes, which will also secretly be deepest lore. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't jot down their classes before. But um they showed us art and uh the NP for SSR Musashi, who is a berserker. Uh and we have SR Osakabe Hime, who is an archer, because she's got two guns. And uh this one really bamboozled a lot of people. We have Summer Carmilla, uh, which was amazing. High five everybody, we called it. We've yeah. won. Mission accomplished. Fly that banner. Uh, she's a writer, which means there are lots of jokes about, uh, lots of jokes that you can make about trusting nobody, not even yourself. Uh, but yeah, so they showed all three of these designs, which instantly blew up. Uh, every, everybody was like, oh my god, uh, Summer Musashi is adorable. You know, she's got like her little one piece. She's got a little, little jet ski that's her noble phantasm. She has swords. Also, Famitsu showed off, which is probably her final ascension, which is she switches to a America bikini, and she has swords, which are also guns. Because America. It's pretty great, honestly. Uh, but yeah, so look forward to that. Also, literally, I think we we literally called two of those. We were like, 
hey, I mean, you know, people, I think people last week were fighting us. It was like, oh, it won't be Os- Osagabe Hime. She got a CE. I'm like, I don't know. People fed CZ we got before. She's an original. Boom. There she is. Two guns. Ready to fight. I mean, I was wanting Summer Carmelo, but I wasn't actually expecting her. Especially in no. this form. We were definitely like, gosh, I really hope they do Summer Carmelo, but I don't know if they will. They did. Um, they did. And it instantly blew up. Because she's dressed as more of like, either maybe like a femme fatale gambler or like a lounge singer. Yeah. Uh, I've also brought this up to her Discord. She may or may not be wearing underwear. Um, her dress is sheer all the way down the center and has lace. And I'm, I'm like, I can't tell if that's lace on the dress or that's something she's wearing. No, if you like zoom in super hard, I think you can see like a pink bottom. Yeah, it's, maybe. It's hard to see. Maybe there's some detail in there, but that's just, I was like, hmm. Uh, and yeah, then today... I, I... They announced the... Oh, actually, they, re- they announced costumes also. So we've confirmed there's... This will be a, the male's banner, which will be at the same time as the first banner. They've confirmed costumes for Fuma, uh, for Siegfried, and for Merlin, um, which is super interesting. So, A, this means that for any future summer events, Merlin's always going to be a bonus servant. That's super cool. And also, that means they get to do a Merlin raid up. Uh, these guys are lunatics, and they're going to steal your fucking money. Mm-hmm. Uh... Honestly, the costumes aren't too extravagant. Like Merlin's, Merlin's pretty fab, but also it's not like crazy out there. Uh, Fuma's very modern, but uh, but Siegfried gets uh gets the Megane. He gets he gets the glasses. I'm pretty sure those are literally actually Sigurd's glasses. Though. Probably, that's probably the joke. Yeah. Um. So it was later today announced they're doing the like it's coming mid August, so probably in the next couple of days when the uh the course for the anniversary ends. Uh, and it has been labeled as Swimsuit Swordmaster's Seven Colored Showdown. Say that seven times fast. Uh, which is giving people hope for future Summer Okita because there's been a lot of teasing about that. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, I, should but, want, I do want to mention, like, they've only shown three. I'm pretty sure there are three more Summer Servants. Yes, that have not there are three off. ones that they have not revealed to us at all. Just yeah. hiding, waiting. Mm-hmm. Gonna ambush you. Uh, but they did also announce the welfare, and they showed her art. Uh, the welfare will be Hokusai, uh, and she is a saber now, and she has four swords. No, seriously, four swords. Um, which I'm I'm kind of happy about. That's pretty cool. You get, they're going to do a, a bonus free Hokusai. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also commented that, uh, remember how everybody was like, do a free forwarder next. Did Lightworks is like, okay. <laughs> Here's your foreigner in a different class. Uh, but yeah, that looks super fun, and we'll get to see some stuff. So many swords. Yeah, you're posting the thing. Uh, J- By the way, I said that uh, Jolter's definitely channeling me in this image that we just posted in our Discord. Uh, big sword energy. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the list of bonus servants was revealed, which is very interesting because literally all of them are Summers, except for the new Small Da Vinci and Passion Lip. Um, so all of them are either old Summer servants or they're males who got Summer costumes. So yeah. That's super interesting. Look out for uh, for Lip in the story, I guess. We'll see. Uh, people are using because Passion Lip's on there that there might be a Summer Melt. Because yeah. usually it's it's not a... Usually they don't put their normal version in with the bonus list. It's usually their Summer version. Yeah, I know some people have been like, oh my god, Summer Lip. I'm like, no, probably not because none of the other characters' normal versions are bonus servants either. Yeah. But maybe Summer Melt? Who knows? Could be. We'll see. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see lots of stuff. Summer BB last year. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was last year. What is Summer King Protea? Uh, honestly, is it? The, I'm, is eh. she going to be, what, a water slide? But no, also, uh, Re- uh, Toronto King has a good point. Um, Nasu clarified in his interview that when they do alternates like Summer Servants, they try not to do anybody who's been out for uh, less than a year. Mm. So yeah, they try not to make them too new. It could be Summer Kiara. Everybody, every, everybody's still scared about Summer Kiara. <laughs> but as we 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 appear to have broken the 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 Takauchi um Wada Arco meme. What well, I mean, actually I think is left. interesting is that people noticed is that it's not actually the artists that may have been the trend. It may have been servants that Nasu wrote. Um oh. Yeah, so it, like um Musashi was primarily written like her character was developed and her segments were written by Nasu. Um oh. so are lots of other of these major characters. So yeah, it's pretty interesting that that might be like where a lot of our SSR summers come from is 
characters that he has directly work on because hey saber saber altar um the extra servants those were all you know primary nasi writing yeah. i think that would still possibly account for okita but i don't know like i don't we don't really know how they pick who goes in what rarity but that was just a an interesting little thought i saw people have all right but yeah say we still got we still have we still have um the part two banner and here's the thing that kind of miffed me a little bit when they were talking about Summer 2 is they didn't preview the CM. I think they're trying to keep things a little bit closer to the chest this time. Yeah, because def- I, I they want to you- let you know it's happening and to get hype, but I don't think they want to necessarily throw out the details too far in advance still. Because um, I do remember um, last year when they previewed uh, Summer uh, 3, there was analysis all day, every day, going into that video of highlighting. Yeah, there, there was frame by frames of, like, who would be in it. Oh my god, Summer BB's gonna be in it, and she was, but yeah, so I, I don't know if maybe they're holding back the animation until a little bit closer because I don't think they need the marketing, is the thing, right? Like, they don't need <laughs> yeah. to market this that far ahead of time. Yeah. They're gonna show this in fucking Shibuya Square again. They're gonna, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna rent out Times Square in New York and be like, hey, play this Japanese-ass game. All right, so let's see. We've been going for an hour 20 now, and we have to move into free talk. I am going to, for the sake of the audience, uh, call for a uh, short intermission once again so everybody can get up and stretch their legs, take a break, because this is going to be a long show. we still got some shit to do. Yeah, yeah. Bio break, as we say in the biz. Yep. All right, and we're back. For you, it was nothing, but for us, it was an eternity. But no, let's move into call day of free talk. So, summer two thoughts. Still going. Uh, let's see. Still Last going. week, I don't think we'd completed... Have we just completed part one? No, no, that was during What's Up recording was actually literally the last race finished. That's right. Yeah. So we were close to being done, but we didn't finish. So part one story finished. You can still go back and farm the nodes, which I have to do because I haven't gotten a fucking CE drop. Damn it. God, God damn it. Damn it. Um, but we moved on to the part two story, and uh, I was immediately happy because I was right. It did not seem to fade. And we got some real good jokes right away. <laughs> Fucking Lobo Cop. Which, by the way, is literally... Like, if you haven't... If you skip past the imagery, you didn't think about it too hard. It's literally Hessian Lobo. But the Headless Horseman has a fucking siren on his head. <laughs> Lobo Cop. Yep. He is the Lobo Cop. I don't... I don't really have a good Robo Cop sound, so... We'll just... Lobo Cop. Oh. Um... You know, uh, we got Wardeness Maeve walking around in her costume, uh, Vice Warden Ketz teaching people to wrestle, uh, lots, lots and lots of prison movie jokes and references, and of course, Ishtar's like, no, we're still fucking racing, I'll keep track. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, well, sure. We have now been introduced into Doll Ishtar. Yeah, she split herself seven ways, because there's six teams and there's one with you. Yep. So she used her divine powers to divide herself, so now she looks like a plush. Um, excuse me, the light works. Uh, Mert, where? Yeah, I'll, I'd buy that. I'd buy that too. But yeah, so that's, that's super funny that we keep going. Um, as you can expect from such characters, uh, we've got Carmilla as one of the guards, Nightingale as, like, chief medical officer. There's a lot of shenanigans in this prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is pretty pretty fun uh gorgon is one of the prisoners enkidu is a is a is a hannibal reference which is super funny yeah so yeah in general i think i think this one's a lot a lot more it's definitely way better than summer one part two yeah so uh lucky what do you what do you think Oh, I'm gonna say, like, unfortunately i haven't been paying too much attention as i said like i've been kind of but i have been you know been following the story and reading along um it it kills me that basically every um, story note there is a um, Meb show where you know you just follow the line, you just follow the life of um, Warden Meb in her everyday life. And then like, well, I can't say like the most recent one because we just recently played it, but the one before that they had a fucking shower time scene. Yeah. At which um, I don't want to actually spoil it, but um, for a reason, um, Meb delivers a roundhouse kit, roundhouse kick. To and it shows it in the shower scene. I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a curtain with her naked silhouette behind it. So mm-hmm. like they're trying to play it up as like, ooh, how sexy. 
I want to be one of those droplets of water. And then she fucking roundhouse kicks. And it's like, oh, it's pretty good. Uh, also, in <laughs> case you forgot, uh, Maeve is a terrible person. There's a good, there's a good shot of it. Um, because uh, one, she's looking for a specific prisoner who's uh, blue haired and has an evade May- skill. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. Maybe um, carrying a staff or a lance, or might be a little bit younger than his original appearance. Um, also, there are reports there is a berserker, and she, one should take caution around them. Uh, but also, um, I'm pretty sure she sexes to death a few male prisoners. She's yeah, like, probably. hey, Ketz, give me your finest trainees. And Ketz is like, oh, but they're going to fucking die. <laughs> ah, whatever. If they die, they weren't. If She basically does the Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies. Like, ah, well, if they die, they weren't worth anything anyway. And then, and then we fade to black because the TV show is like, oh, we can't show you that. Uh, we fade to black, and then it's then then uh, Maeve comes back, and she's like, "Ah, that was great. I feel relieved. Worked off some tension. I'm gonna go take a shower." Because <laughs> Maeve showers a lot, apparently. The same time every day. Yeah, she's trying. She's she's set a trap. I don't know if it's supposed to be a literal trap, or uh, if it's just like she leaves her door unlocked while she goes to shower, considering that she's Maeve and she's definitely not in danger in that situation. Yeah, that's actually something that they she they actually bring up a lot of times is that she has so much um faith in like her prison field that she basically ignores almost all other Yeah, um, you, the the teams are able to fuck around digging with spoons and hammers and stuff. Um for what are we on the fourth round of this? And yeah. nobody really seems to have Oh shit, the prisoners are out of their cell. So yeah, it's pretty lax security. There's been some some fun stuff though. And as I said, I have some ideas, like, I don't know, I haven't played the latest story, um, but I have my eyes on Ketz, because I feel like Ketz's character is kind of playing up how she was in Babylonia. She's got her scary face on. Yeah, she got her scary face on. But at the same time, I don't think she's necessarily entirely a bad guy. Well, I mean, she's, she is lawful good. That was an important yeah. thing. Somebody, somebody was like, um, uh, somebody was like, oh man, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of not liking Maeve's antics here, and I'm like, I mean, she is chaotic evil, guys. She's not supposed to be a role model. Like, that's the thing. Uh, Maeve's whole thing as, like, a character, especially in FGO, is that she's super cute and beautiful, and you just think, oh, she's just, like, maybe she's the slightly bitchy, you know, cheerleader girl. No, she's, she's gonna fucking murder your whole family and, like, raise an army against you and steal your cattle. Um, but you don't realize it until it's too late. Because of how cute she is, so cute. Uh, can't wait. Yeah, for, uh, unlock like, that costume, my, guys. I wanna. I wanna buy it. Yeah. But um, was there something? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so, well, uh, something I was gonna finally mention is in the beginning, you go to investigate the bridge collapse, and you run into Maeve, and she's just like, "What are these guys doing here?" We're like, "Oh, we're just we're just hiking." She's like, "Okay, hey, y- you guys are my loyal subjects, right?" And you're like, "Shit." She clearly wants some kind of response, and we're like, "You rock, Maeve," and she's like, mm, "Yes, good, praise me." <laughs> I, I would have gone like Hail Meb, but whatever, or Hail Maeve. Maeve is, um, Maeve is like you know evil incarnate, but it, it kind of she's kind of a simple girl. Yeah, she's she is she's 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 a little bit of a basic bitch. She wants very simple things. She uh, wants her man. She wants a lot of praise, and she does not want cheese. No, but also, um, she she also wants her kingdom to be run orderly. She's like, this is my connect, my connect prison. What the fuck are you guys doing drawn all over it? Like, she she calls the racing and the racetrack basically, like, almost the equivalent of, like, you're scribbling on her, uh, on her blackboard, right? Like, you're, are you, she's like, you're doodling on my walls. What are you doing? Not... You're etching some weird mes- mystic thing into my land, which is funny. Um, but yeah, there's it's pretty good. It's uh, it gives you a lot of Maeve action, which is fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a decent amount of uh, decent amount of cats. But yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, they do a good thing with like the split up Ishtar copies and stuff to explain like how you're still cheering on for them, like you're giving them the supplies they need, which. Ishtar is smuggling to them in prison. Uh, I kind of wish I had imagery for this, just because that's that's got to be hilarious. 
yeah. these these tiny plush doll Ishtars just you know daisy chaining supplies to the teams as they're fucking around inside the walls. Because these are still our summer teams, they are still definitely fucking around. <laughs> uh, there's there is definitely some uh, there's like some commentary where uh, Raiko gets a little a little agitated, and she's like, "Are you talking about something indecent? Let's fight." No, we're just talking to this guy. Fight him. Public indecency. And you're like, okay, thanks, Raiko. <laughs> but it's definitely starting to show off that Raiko's probably not as minding as much deep public decency as she originally let on. Well, her her idea of what's what's of offending the public decency is not what most people think. Yeah. And she did and then she has um clearly stated um she wants more chances to show off her swimsuit. Well, yeah, at, th- th- at this point, she's still in her her Ascension 3, because her Ascension 1 is her with the weird hat. Uh, but she she has advanced to her Ascension 3, which is just the swimsuit, because she was trying to be more beautiful, obviously. Yep. Um, that was her secret weapon. So now it's just like, I'm stuck. I'm Now I'm stuck in prison in my swimsuit, so I'd like to, you know, get some fucking value. I went out, I changed. <laughs> you know, uh... Though several of them had some funny points, like um, uh, Helena uh was actually uh a little bit miffed because Maeve showed no concern at all and just split them up in cells by teams. Yeah. So she was stuck in a prison cell with with Tesla and Edison, which I'm sure was super fun. But they got out. They escaped. What? That well, prison luckily. cell. Oh, luckily, uh, I would say. Like Helena, Helena's and the fucking um electricity bros, uh, they have a real wholesome relationship. So you know. Also, it's another important thing. Helena still still in her ascension. Uh, it's weird. I think the school swimsuit is actually her first ascension. Yes. So she she technically went back down a sprite, but still for the look. So yeah, but mm-hmm. she's still in that in that mode and hasn't switched as far as I know, which is kind of funny. They're like they're keeping internal continuity, which is cool. Oh, did Fran change back? Well, she was kind of she was possibly a little concerned about the bandage thing, so that makes sense. Yeah. Apparently, she changed back, but still. Well, I think she changed back because freaking Babbage would not let his friend's daughter run around in something like that. Yes, Babbage, Babbage is the the true prefect. Yeah, constantly yelling at Professor M for the last time. She's not your daughter. He refuses to listen. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. The fr- France fine. <laughs> because, you know, she has her her mysterious papa and the other one is a giant robot. How did he fit though? How big are these cells? I don't know. Uh by the way, if you haven't looked at um um what you call it? Um your your room, my room recently. Uh you're in prison right now. They switched. Oh. You're not in the garage, you're in jail now. So yeah, that's super I fun. Uh Anything else about I Summer 2? I think I need to power through some stuff. I said, Enkidu and, um, I said, it's pretty funny, like, Gorgon, um, giving, um, her, you, giving, um, you her acid, she, you know, turns around, and she's like, no, it is not that. No, the, the, the joke is that, like, it seems like she's, she's just puking, but no, it's like, possibly she may be vomiting a little, but it's like, she's secreting some super strong acid. Yeah. Also, yes, um, these are, there are a lot of retro game references, one of them was clearly Dig Dug. Yep. Uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's another one, big one. Yeah, they've put, a, they've put a lot of pop culture references in this, which is always good. It's very funny. I'm trying to think. I wish I knew, I, I wish I knew more Shawshank Redemption quotes off the top of my head. You, one of the things you can suggest is that they tear out the, the toilet and uh, crawl through the pipes. Yeah. Yeah, there was a tetris type one. This was came from out. Basically, there's a lot of classic movie references, which is okay. Um, where, let's see, I had a thing. Oh, I was thinking about my room, because I was going to uh, mention that uh, recently I've... So previously, Ishtar was my favorite in my room, uh, mm-hmm. but for for a while I've switched to Summer Mordred so uh, she can level up and get some stuff, because my writer Ishtar is not permanent. But um, uh, Mordred Summer does have some great uh, room dialogue. Uh, one of one when she lists her likes, she goes, "Oh, I like, uh, what was it? It's like I like the beach. I like surfing. I like my nothing. I didn't say anything, which is adorable. 
Like she she does the the Japanese verbal backspace. <laughs> My, yeah, nope, nope. Didn't say nothing. Just standing there going. Mm. Mm. You're gonna give me a better. Oh, fuck, I gotta wait. Another, well, it'll be fully voiced next year at least. I'm just thinking about. Fuck, I gotta wait another Valentine's. But I'll get you. It's, you're gonna. We're gonna have the real Valentine's, and you're not gonna just give me your shitty half-eaten chocolate bar, which was. On the, that's the thing I think I talked about before, that that's like, to Japanese connotations, that's both incredibly forward, but also really shitty. Because on the one hand, <laughs> she's eating it, so indirect kisu. On the other hand, she literally just pulled something out of her pocket that she wasn't planning on giving you anyway, because she's Mordred. That's super fun. But we'll, we'll talk about how amazing Valentine's will be next year. Uh, I don't think we really have anything summer-related to do. Uh, I'm still working on my temporary Ishtar. I haven't got her to her final ascension because farming's a little bit weird. I did get a CE drop for the uh, the uh, the part two shop. I got I got dive into blue, which is good because that's a that's a I think that's drawn by redrop, right? It looks kind of like it, uh, it but it's like it. it's the mash one. Um, which, by the way, I joked to the community. I was like, of course, mash the ultimate free to play comes easy to me, uh, but the the uh, the five star CE that has to drop, which has uh, Cleo on it, dodges me, of course. But yeah, uh, I think we don't have much to talk about summer two in that regard yet. Let's see, what are we at? We're about an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to do so you didn't get that five star really quick, and then maybe we can do the other thing I wrote down if we feel like it. So let's talk about Dead Heat Summer two and those five stars. So first, let's talk about art ca- arts cards on motorcycles. It's time for Summer Helena. Um, because what says Summer like Nerf? No, not that Nerf, the other Nerf. The reason why we call it thing Nerf. Uh, so Helena has what in my mind is the Archer deck. Quick, quick, Arts arts Buster. She's roughly in the middle of the attack HP spread. She leans a little more personally to HP, obviously, but that's pretty typical. Uh, her NP gain may seem a little bit low, but her two Arts cards are five hits. So hopefully she should still have a pretty positive NP gain on that. Uh, so that's a, that's a thing. And, uh, she has an AOE Arts NP, like you might expect, which inflicts a small amount of defense down and debuff down on the enemy based on overcharge. Her first skill, Summer Vacation, gives your team up to 20% NP charge and generates five stars per turn for five turns, but has quite a long cooldown. I kind of get the idea they're going for here. This is kind of trying to, like, keep some of her previous support kit. It just, the 20% charge is nothing to sneeze at, but it's still, like, a very long space. Uh, her second skill is called NYARF, in all caps. <laughs> uh, so this is, gives her a weird five hits of damage plus for, like, five turns. Uh, up to 2k, so it's not anything to, it's not nothing to sneeze at, okay? Uh, and also it gives a single enemy charge down. Uh, pretty typical stall stuff. And then her final skill gives her an art steroid for herself for one turn for 20 to 40%, and gives her one term of Demo Fumini, and it has a reasonable cooldown. She also has independent action and magic resistance at C. So she's kind of like a team supporter, like her caster form, but also she's got a couple of damage increasers, but also she's got a little bit of stall stuff. It's a little it's a little weird. I don't think her her kit feels consistent enough that she actually carves out her own niche. Like she's not great, but she's probably not as weird as say Launch Emia was. Right? Like, she's not necessarily bogged down by her really world skill set. I just feel like she doesn't have anything she does super, uh, does super well, you know? I would say that she's, she's not, she can't be really considered a linchpin of any one strategy, but she can play a supporting role to one if your, if your options are a bit limited. Yeah, if, if you want to use Arts Archers, she has that skill set. She can do damage. And she can also do team stuff, so it's not terrible, it's just, like, I think part of it, like, looking at her passives, her passives are really low, like, she's got independent action management at CM, like, I don't really, you don't really scream at me what you're supposed to be doing, Helena. So if you find something for her to do, uh, go for it. Uh, next, uh, take your mom to the beach. Actually, uh, this Raiko is more, uh, your son calls me mommy too. Ooh. So, uh, I'm dying Summer, over here in 12 Rikos. Summer Raiko sits comfortably in the middle of the HP attack zone. She has the standard Lancer Quick Quick Arts Buster Buster deck. 
Her arts hit count and NP gain are pretty high to compensate that single arts card. She's got like four hits and like a .75, I want to say. It's pretty up there. Her quick card hits aren't awful either, and she has a pretty good writing, as we'll talk about later. So, like, AQQ will probably do a pretty decent uh, boost up. Uh, so let's start with the NP, as we like to. This is a single target buster, which ignores defense and generates a lot of free crit stars. She just gets 20 crit stars. Also, it's like a four or five hit buster. So it generates crit, crit stars anyway. So yeah, um, she makes a lot of stars, which I decided to start with her NP because it perfectly snowballed into her first skill, the Shadow Prefect, which gives her one turn of improved star weight. I think it's 1,000% at its max. Um, and also gives her up to 50% crit up. So Lancers are already middle of the road as far as star absorption does. So this is like a pretty sizable upgrade to her vacuum skill. So yeah, <laughs> Lucky's um, overprotective mom. She will. She will on this turn after dropping her NP. She will crit big, assuming you didn't win the fight with that one. You know. So uh, next, she shows off her sick yo-yo skills with a targetable three-turn Buster buff, twenty to forty percent, which is also a debuff cleanse. That's right. Her yo-yo skills are so sick she can make you feel better. That's my head cannon now. That buff removal is she's like, look at my su- sweet yo-yo trick. I'm gonna do walk the dog. Around the world. Yo-yoing, by the way, is a thing I can't do really well. But I can make yo-yo jokes. And then, so super interesting enough, her final skill is Summer Catastrophe. This is the usual Summer Charisma, only the second part, which is... um, Is it Crit Strength or uh, Star Drop? Shoot, I should have wrote this down. I was like, I'll remember what the Summer Charisma thing does. Yeah, it's Star Drop. It's, it's, it's Star Gen. Um... So normally, like, um, the beach flower or whatever, summer stuff is like, oh, this affects just dudes. Uh, Riko doesn't. This is all your teammates get her, get their star drop and their attack up. She's a cataclysm on the waterfront. The summer catastrophe. Which basically is her, her summer look is so outrageous that there will be a fight, basically. <laughs> um, and then she tops all this off with, uh, a pretty decent passive spread. So she's got, uh, magic resistance C, not terrible. She's still got her madness enhancement down to C, interesting enough. So she's still a little bit crazy, just a tiny, tiny bit crazy. Um, and she has divinity C, so she has that damage plus, which is, you know, plenty fun. Uh, and then she has, as I mentioned before, uh, writing A plus. So those quick cards are gonna, are gonna smack pretty good. So yeah, she, uh, she's a powerhouse. And that's all we really got to really got to go for. I mean, you have to you have to make your own I'm decisions. Eventually, eventually, I am gonna have to fucking level up and use her because I said I do have her at MP fucking five, so the MP should. Yeah. Hey, really? Lucky you. Really you literally are this segment. This is hey. So you didn't get that five star. Oh my god, you're right. No. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that's, that's, in case people are new to have you know tuning in the show for the first time, doing this segment. That's that's what this started out as. Is I talk about like. Uh, three and four stars who are on the banner because they don't get wanted episodes or whatever. Oh, God. Segments you can, the segment you can do you like your mom and her five hit Buster Noble Phantasm attack. Yeah. The memes. Love the memes. Like I said, though, this, this Summer Raiko is definitely like, y- she's not necessarily just out of mama anymore. It's like, she's like, no, you're, your son calls me mommy too. I'm like, okay. Cause she, she's she's very serious business. The seriousness is. is. Uh, so here is let's see. Uh, we've been going for an hour forty five. Do you want to save this other thing I wrote in free talk for another time or? Yeah, I want to save it another time because did we ever actually really talk about like going about like the whole FGO fest as a whole? No, you're right. We we took an intermission before we talked about that. So yeah, let's let's yeah. talk about that instead. And we'll save the other thing. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, they were doing, uh, big streams. I think they were both eight hours, two days over the weekend. Yeah. And here's the crazy thing. Um, I actually sat down and watched all the streams. Because, like, we can get into, like, what they actually were later, but, like, for some, like, even though you can't, like, I couldn't, like, fully understand them, just hearing, like, these high-energy, happy Japanese people was still vastly entertaining. Oh, yeah. Everybody was super cool. And honestly, I talked, I joked about this because we talked about the FSN anniversary panel. Honestly, you can follow a decent chunk of the conversation with just your anime Japanese knowledge and all the all the loan words. Yeah. 
Like, like specifically in the F in the um Fate Stay Night panel, motherfucking um Joji uh, Nataka or is it Nakata? I can't remember the name. The voice actor for Kyrie, this man shows up. Well, he shows he was in the panel before it. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but he shows up to the panel before it dressed as Kyrie Kuntamine. Now, note this guy is sixty five years old. Yes, he's he sixty five, and he's he's an old dude, and he came out there playing he's about and he is as up. old as Kire is. <laughs> um, and he is like high energy this entire time. You definitely note this in the Face Day Night panel where the other VAs were a little more subdued, but and um, and Joji literally is the MC. Like, leading up to things, talking about things, doing fucking um, Kyrie voice. At one point, um, he goes, are you my master? And you're like, oh, God, there's, yeah. there's some... He, he there's does, some... He does, they, were, they were talking about the, the famous scene, and he does the joke himself. Yeah. It's like, it was great. Like, um, for me right now, Joji and Nakata is, like, um, motherfucking MVP. Like, Shadow MVP. Because I found out later that he was actually wearing a wig, too. I was like, oh, my God. As he was taking a break backstage. Because here's another, like, the other fun aspect of that. If you actually follow, like, um, the voice actors' uh, Twitters and stuff, they were giving you a whole bunch of, like, behind-the-scenes looks and stuff, too. It was great. Yeah, because they all, they all like to hang out and stuff. And we talked uh, a lot fact, about the uh, FSN anniversary panel last week. Uh, fun fact. Um, fucking Sakura's and writers. uh... Um, Sakura and Riders VA uh, both hang out a lot in real life. They have yeah, dates. they're cl- honestly the whole the whole squad's pretty close. I think. Yeah, they like to hang out and do stuff. Like I, like I said, when I was watching the FSN panel, I was I was really expecting like like Medusa's VA or or uh, Emmy Archer's VA to like just bust out of the curtain and like, <laughs> hey, you forgot me. Like, where were these people? Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know if they were at the thing, which is you know always the issue. It's like scheduling because there were a shitload of voice actors. The oh yeah, the actual FGU anniversary panel was what I, f- I feel like was it like nine guests? It was big. There was a lot of fucking people. Mafia was there. Uh, Nobunaga was there. Uh, Nita Chris's VA was there. Kosumi was there, of course. Uh, Okubo was there. Liz. Um, yeah, <laughs> no- Nobunaga showed up dressed as Arjuna Alter because he's a. He's a huge nerd, and I love him. Oh, Merlin's uh, VA was uh, there. Was he? At, was he at the thing? I don't know. Yeah. I know he was at. I know he was at the festival, but was he actually at that panel? Was he at that panel? I don't remember. Um, I think Caddox VA it? was at that one, which is very you know, interesting. Caddox like, VA. That's that's who it was. Yeah, it's very interesting that he sh- he shows up a lot despite the fact that he can't possibly have a lot of voice lines. <laughs> oh, also by the way, that was what? another cool thing that was in episode zero of Babylonia. There was a uh, team A cameo. Yep. So all the cryptos were Team A? Yes, they were the A team. Oh, uh, okay. So you get to see them all together. That's going to be super interesting for people who don't know about Part 2 here when they localize it. A little, little preview for the oh. for later this year. Um, but um, uh, Satoshi was there. He did not Stella, but he was very loud. He had some sunglasses he was very, on. He was very cool. Yeah, he was. Cool. He was the he was only one of two people who was actually able to get the ball and into... yeah, because that was the, they did that they did that thing where they was they had yeah. a little twisty ball thing, uh, trying to get because into because it was funny mouth. because, um, I can't remember his name, but Cadax VA basically says, yeah, I'm gonna use a command seal and have um Stella, do it, and he was and the guy was like, well, okay, and he did it, yeah, and but the thing I found hilarious about that is even after he won, the rest of the VA is like, all right, still, I'm like. That's good. Like that makes me feel like you know they actually like are do want to be there and participate in this one, even when the game's over. Like no, we want to keep playing. Yeah, they they're having a lot of fun there. Um, also, uh, I think kind of it was there at that one. She was at several. I think she was at the anniversary one. And also, I think for the first time, um, on a on any FGO stream I've seen, uh, Sari Hayami was there. Which, by the way, is always super. It's that's interesting to hear her speak because um, her at least on stage, like there's some people who's like. Oh, we actually uh, had this observation during the FSN panel. Um, Shiro's VA um, is just his normal speaking voice is Shiro, basically. Yeah. Um, so, um, Saori's uh, normal speaking voice is closer to Yumiko, I would say. 
normal Yumiko anyway. Not like full freak out Yumiko, but normal Yumiko. Uh, that's how she sounds. So she was very she was very sweet and stuff on stage, which I think is very interesting given given some of her characters. Uh but <laughs> she seemed super psyched to be there. Yeah. Uh, um, kind of Ueda had that too, where you just listen to her talk. It's like that's just Rin. Yeah, Rin's just her talking. Yeah. Like there are there are some people, and honestly, um, Arash is just uh, Satoshi talking, but he also started on Fate as as uh, Gills. So that's very clear. That that's interesting that you would be like, whoa, he's weird. It's weird that he did that voice. Um, they did do an arcade thing, which, by the way, made me immediately go. Please, Delightworks, make a shitty console port. It looks yeah, so like, good. I think this is the first time I actually watched um, actual gameplay footage yeah, of it. Yeah, same. That like, I've yet. only ever seen, like, the trailer gameplay, not, like, yeah. people actually play it for real. Yeah. So uh, I was like, oh, this is actually looks pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, because it's, it's like FGO, because there's, like, cards and skills and stuff you pop, but it's real-time 3D, basically. So you're you're they were on an island map. They were doing a summer tie-in. So you wander around and there this was PVP too, I think. Uh. But you're walking around actively using your servants kind of like in sequence and you know, doing all your stuff walking around with all the animations and it was just like god damn, that's really cool. The the models are really good. So yeah, I was like please make a crappy PlayStation. You're you're Sony. <laughs> you know, Aniplex is owned by Sony. You could do it. Just put it out on the PSN for like not a whole lot of money, like whatever you think you need. And like, I don't know. Um, we'll talk more about this probably on WhatsApp. But uh, Sony did say that they were they were joining Microsoft and Nintendo that they were mandating a certain amount of transparency with loot box tech. Not yeah. that I think that policy actually affects FGO because they've disclosed for a while. But I don't know if they necessarily would want to put the the gotcha ear elements into a console version, but you could definitely just make it currency, you know, let you grind for whatever. I don't, I don't know how the mechanics of stuff work, but yeah, it's looks super cool. Like on the one hand, I'm like, I'm not averse if they could bring a couple of the machines over, but that's also really niche and hard to do. Yeah. But the physical arcade machines also have the actual cards they print out that you can take with you. So that would be an extra quality that you couldn't get on like a, a console rebrand. Yeah. Which is the same, but like um, I said, I just want the, I just do... want the game because it looks cool. Clearly, we just need a, a revitalization of the arcade culture here in America. Clearly, uh, yeah. God, I wish. Honestly, though, I mean, uh, Kuikla said it. You know, bring your bring your mobile servants over. They could do that really easy. They have all that server side data. Also, yes, uh, Zero Remus, There are there are American arcades which will buy Japanese machines literally. But yeah, that's, know, like, that's still um, that's still a little bit niche. Yeah, like um, we have um, like speaking um, like locally, we have like barcades and like pinball bars, but nothing like a dedicated like. Oh yeah, no, we're gonna like. Um, but it's like it's like a retro. It's a lot of like a retro theme stuff. Um, like usually our bowling alleys will have like a few machines. Like you might find like an Area Fifty One uh, DDR. DR machine and maybe like a couple other things, you know, maybe a time. Yeah, crisis. I'm thinking that's that's mostly where I, where I remember uh, arcade machines being when I was like younger was like like uh, there weren't really arcades around anywhere I lived, but it's like well if you go to a bowling alley, there's like a section blocked off in the front where there's a, there's you know a couple of pinball machines, a couple of GDR machines, some light gun games. Uh, movie theaters would have a couple of those a lot, you know, like a couple of things yeah. in the front, usually running yeah, movie like, tie-in the- games. Like, I'm trying to, like, uh, there's an arcade that I want. There's, like, a an entertainment center that, you know, like, the bowling alley and arcade that I want to go to because they say they have, like, a bunch of Japanese games. So I want to go try that. Yeah, I, uh, but, the mall near me, which, that's that's saying something. I, there's a mall near me. And, yes, it is a ghost town, like you'd expect. They opened up a an arcade recently, but it's, like, a kid-friendly zone. So also they got, like, like, bounce castles and stuff in addition to arcade machines. So I'm sure that they don't do, like niche Japanese imports and stuff. It's just they're they're trying to do a center where, you know, you can do what I assume most people used to do with arcades, which is you drop your kids off there for like an afternoon and you can go do your actual shit while your kids just feed quarters in the machine. Yeah, I would love to have like Japanese arcade machines where you can actually where the fighting games is like connected on like opposite sides. So you can actually play against other people. Yeah, no. Um really part of it I think is cuz Japan's a lot 
denser. It's a lot closer together, but they totally have an actual honest to god arcade culture over there, which is very robust still. Yeah. But yeah, so there was an uh, there was an arcade panel. Uh, there was multiple anime panels. They did they. Sh- oh, the um fucking um, sure um, keep visuals, right? I can't remember his name, but Emiya's VA and Sakura's VA did a live reading for some of um the Heaven Fields. That was That's cool. right. Heaven, there is a Heaven's Field panel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there were two days of Caldea Radio. That was great. The girls were fangirling a lot. High they energy. That. That's their move. Great. Uh... Also, no, please, no. I don't want. Don't do that to me. Don't do physical cards. They're like they can just sell you the trading cards. No, please, no. I mean, I got like I got a bunch of cards from like Excel and Excel Link. I'm happy. Yeah, duel's gonna close out. out. Oh, um, we talked about that last week, I think, too. But I'm like, I'm really excited for the uh, board yeah. game to come out. I want that. Oh uh, yeah, Battle for the Holy Grail. Yeah. Um. Uh... Wait, no, um, what do they call it? Dominate Holy Grail War? Yeah. It was something like that. Hey, it looks cool. But yeah, also, yes, people are talking about FGO Duel happens. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, look at the old panel, but they announced an official board game, uh, which is set in, it's a Fate Stay Night game. So, uh, it's, it's an, an interesting, uh, looking production. They were like, you can mix and match master, and you got little master acrylic standees, and little servant standees, and you can mix them up. And I'm like, they're obviously going to do expansions later for other characters. But for now, it's the core. It's the core original FSN crew and the core FSN. So you, the the visual they used um, in the panel was, uh, I think it was Saber with Sakura, Archer with Shiro, which was really funny, and um, oh, yeah, Ryder that's why with we, um, That was right. That was why we had the, um, that was why we had the Joji joke of are you my master? Yes. Uh, yeah, here it is. Let me pull up an image. It's Dominate Grail War. Uh, the English is high. Well, that's what I said r- about that panel, which was like almost all of the titles for everything was in, um, was in English said in, you know, uh, Japanese accents. So it was like, okay, like I understand most of what you're saying because you're using English loan words. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm really they they technically brought over dual, so I'm really hoping they bring this over here, even if it means they might have to do some shenanigans with printing. Um, but yeah, so I'm like I'm like that because also another thing is hey, tabletop simulator exists, so somebody will make a TDS mod, which will be translated. Just saying. Um, but uh, we we've talked about this a lot before, especially on WhatsApp, that uh, both of us really love board games, so. That'll be that will be interesting to see. But uh let's see what else uh I'd have to look at the whole list of panels to see what else happened. But there was a lot of like anime tie-ins, there was a lot of there was actually shockingly very little game stuff. There was like arcade, and then there was the FGO creative team panel, and then there was the actual big deal anniversary panel where they announced all the shit. Uh they had a variety show where that the setting was a um uh, setting was a family restaurant. It was it was funny. Um, there's a pop quiz event with um with um, a bunch of the guys. I can't remember that. There was a um learning learning FGO segment, the one that was run by um Nobunaga's puppet. <laughs> it's like I said again, like. I followed all the streams, but I really wasn't like I said I couldn't. Yeah, like, there were some of them that like I tried to keep the streams on in the background a lot, a lot of times, but there were a lot of stuff where I'm just like I have no idea what's going on, so I'm just gonna do my other stuff. Yeah, but at the same time, I, like I said, there was high energy the entire fucking time. And no, um, it was enjoyable. That's something that FGO is good for. Is one a I think that's kind of a, a Japanese culture thing is like bringing all that energy, but also the FGO at least the a lot of the actors and people they bring in are genuinely super excited to be here. Not just because I'm sure they give them work all the time. Um, I don't know about I, fucking Merlin's VA. He had some choice words. He he seems very, very dignified for some of this stuff, and he's just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> um, also, um, was he at the... Was he only at the arcade panel, or was he at something else? Um, Achilles VA was here. Uh, and he was he was pretty high energy. Yeah. I don't know. I, he was definitely on the arcade one, but I think he was on some other stuff. But he... he He's a fun guy. He was demanding for years to be put in the game. Like he was an he was an FGO fan before he was in it, <laughs> which uh, lots of people are. I think um, uh, Ueda has said uh, 
for instance, that she's she has shelled out money for herself before. <laughs> she's wailed for herself. So it's 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 pretty interesting. And this is an important thing to note is that this the the reason why they did an FSN panel was 15th anniversary. So Fate's Day Night came out 15 years ago, uh, which means that uh, those guys have been in those uh, jobs for. Not quite that long, because it, it wasn't voiced over originally, but they've, they've been in the community a long time. Though also, this did remind me, there were some screen grabs that people took that I need to look at, because there was some fun information spread around. So I should see where to put those. Oh, they're all labeled down here. So let's see, what, else, what other kind of stuff I got? Uh, Fate Artworks. Oh yeah, they showed that really cool timeline. Oh yeah. Of like, all the, all the Fate all the Fate Stay Night stuff and and other Fate like big TV. Uh they showed off those figures. We talked about Caps Capsule Servant coming back. Oh, I'll show I'll show the people that image I saved. But let's see. So um they did the thing they like to do, which was um who gets grailed the most uh this year. Uh so I'll read that off really quick. They showed this this slide. Uh number five was Kama. Number four was Arjuna Alter. Number three was Asclepius. Uh, number two was Gray. And number one was Kagetora. So that's pretty cool. Um, they showed off some new merch they're going to do. Uh, we realized that what they were doing, the sons of bitches, they're trying to sell you all the CE art as like bookmarks and acrylic standees at the, at the, the convention. That's why they only give you two. They're going to steal your money. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have the original arts for the three summers. Uh, I swear there was something else. There was like, who was the... I think I got it else somewhere else, but it was like, uh, who, they showed off like who was the most grailed of all time and stuff. But I don't, I didn't save those screen screen grabs. It's a shame. Uh, but yeah, overall the event, uh, pretty high quality. I like it a lot. Like I really, I want them to be able to bring that kind of energy to to stateside. But at the same time, I've said this before, we I don't think we have. Well, first of all, America's huge, so it's harder to bring people together. But I don't think even here. FGO has quite that reach where they can like set up their own convention and block out a couple days, you know. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame, but well, they're see, trying. They... They're doing stuff. Well, was it like what? Was there? Did they have a FGO Fest their third year? I think it was okay. the third year. It was like a big thing that they did separately. So maybe they'll try and do something next year for us. I mean, we got a road show. I don't know how um I don't know how wildly um successful that was. Uh, I think it sold out pretty quick, so it's not terrible. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, if we can maintain momentum and maintain a growth, we might be able to do it. Which I think we are, because we're like every time they do this sort of stuff, like you know, FGO gets more success and they get more like honestly, attention like, honest- and things. Like, honestly, if they take all the assets that they put into doing this road show, which was, you know, like, six, um, what was it, like, five or six stops, and just try to compress it in two days, they might be able to do something like that. It's like, it'd be easier on BAs and scheduling, be easier, like, on, like, hotels and whatnot. As I said, it'd be easier to sell tickets, because people would only have one location they would need to try to get to, merch, yeah. all that crazy stuff. Like, generally speaking, doing that is, um, it'd be easier. The only problem is, is the amount of content they would have to do. Like, yeah, and also, North- there's, then there's also the, well, shit, what's our location, right? Yeah. Because you would want to make sure it didn't over, you would probably want to make sure if you were doing a standalone event, it didn't necessarily overlap with another convention. Yep. Um, so you'd have to, like, pick, oh, where's the best place for this? Which is hard, because, like we said, America's pretty big. Yeah. Like, I like, honestly, feel like I bet- West Coast would be the ideal place, but like you know, where where you go, what do you do? Uh, so we'll see what they do next year. Honestly, I would, like honestly, off the off the cuff, I have to say it have to probably be either like Los Angeles where AX is, or up in Seattle. Uh, yeah, they'd probably like probably they'd do it like uh wherever it was they did the intro to FGO tour because that was actually a standalone event, but it was smaller because it was like, hey, we're kicking off the tour. Yeah, yeah, Los Angeles where AX. Is. Place. Yeah, was it literally I'd the same like, building as AX? I don't know. I don't know. But as I said, like I said, like production, like cost wise and time and scheduling wise, it'd be a lot easier just to do a two day event. But again, like the FGO Festes in Japan's are basically a bunch of panels, a bunch of merch, and a bunch of you know displays, and then brand new fucking news. 
Right. Like, Albert has gone on the record saying, like, yeah, you, we know you're clairvoyancy X, and it kind of makes it difficult when we want to do it, but we can't. But we yeah, gotta it roll makes, with it. it makes them marketing and hyping harder. Yeah. Um, but And like, also, there's some of the thing to be said for some of the, the tech stuff, because, like, for instance, uh, at this year's FGO Fez, uh, I mentioned this last week, I think, but at th- at the at the Halloween Town segment, there was a fucking Tupac hologram Liz, right? Doing the yep. intro and stuff. Um, so, like, that would mean they'd either need to have access to that kind of stuff on hand, or they'd need to import those machines from Japan. Well, yeah, so, like, honestly, like I said, that could be something that could be due. They can import, like, the game machines, like, the glass. Um, maybe they can even set up the escape room in an area. They can have, like, the food, like, the board game setups. They can do a lot of stuff. It's just, is it enough to warrant a two-day Right, is thing? it enough, and it is enough to warrant the expense. Like, will they make yeah. their money back? Yeah. Which is always a big question, right? Also, um, Devil's thing- Leader says the issue is probably the anniversary would be too close to Axe for at least an NA. Honestly, if they did it the their own, like, fest... If they did their own up. thing, that would be like a week or two ahead of AX. So yeah, they could probably squeak yeah. that in there. I don't know. By the way, also another important thing to note: uh, Redrop drew some art for the anniversary uh, for the anniversary in summer, which is great. A classic redrop. There's a floating superboard comma up there. There's Astolfo on the Hippogriff. I think Bradamante is also up there. Um, I think it's Lancer Artoria and Summer Raiko having a cavalry battle. Uh, Junoku is riding on Karna's shoulders. Uh, there's some other fun stuff. Uh, Nito is in her full-blown Medjid form, just like sadness. Assassin Skahawk is attacking. Yeah, Skahawk's fucking bicycle kicking some coups in the background. <laughs> um, uh, King Protea is making a wave which Surf Dread is surfing on, um, and also it looks like uh, Artoria is and uh, Ushi are running on the wave, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, there's what I thought was my big mood, which was tucked between Mash in the foreground and Mave in the slightly less foreground. There's, uh, Kyo talking to Osakaba Hime in a, who's in an inner tube or something. Just like, wah. And I'm like, yes. Up at the front, Are there's the three Johns. Just staring at this, just deadpan face at this is a ball, uh. Yes. Yeah, his super but ball. I'll- and regular Arjun is like, no, don't do that. That's a bad idea. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, you can you can't hardly see it, but it looks like there's an Atlante teaching Jack how to swim in the back behind uh, Ash Faceman, Angry Boy, uh, Murasaki and Shahrazad are just hanging out. Uh, Jean Lilty and John are like are doing watching, their thing uh, while John Alter is like in a huff. It's adorable. It's super adorable. Oh, that's because she's looking at her sisters. Yes, she's like, I don't want to hang out with you, but also I want to hang out with you. Fucking foe's got a little inner tube. I'm laughing at these Valkyries who are watching a Skahawk, like, kill these two. Yeah, because what else can you do? Like, goddammit, Redrop, there are heads at the roller coaster. Like, I have no idea who the fuck they are, but there are people on that roller coaster. Oh, I bet Redrop knows. Uh, by the way, if you notice <laughs> in the very background, there is uh, Ivan's huge mammoth is just chilling back there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Gudako is actually in this. She's riding on Bunyan's giant shoulder. Well, it looks like I want to say that's cat waves because of the ribbon and the hands. Why did Kagatora bring her horse? Because she, uh, she does. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of little details in this, which is great. It's a great piece of art. Redrop does one of these like every year, too. Yeah, does a big celebration. Uh, all right, well, we're over two hours, so let's wrap up. Uh, we'll leave that other all thing right. I wrote about until later. That'll be a fun discussion topic for next week when suddenly we have nothing to talk about. That's a lie. We'll, we'll have stuff to talk about for quite a while, because I think they already announced they're going back to uh, Kilmath, which will mean a new banner, and probably do some events announcements, but that's not until September. But there's going to be a physical FGO presence at Kilmath. Um, but no, we'll, we'll be immediately into summer, and then probably there will be a brief break before something fest. And then it's going to be into Halloween and stuff, so. The rest of this year is going to be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. We'll see what happens. I wonder if they're, uh, well, like, do you, do you, I'll ask now, do you think they're going to do Gilfez the sequel, or they're just going to keep rotating it? Uh, I'm not, they have to, wait, wait, uh, give me the question again. Yeah, do you think that this year they will do basically a Gilfest sequel, or will it be a completely new festival type thing, because we're not doing Nero Fez anymore, apparently. I think they're going to. 
I think they're going to do something to continue off of Gilfest. Because Gilfest this time had a bit more of a story. Yeah, it had an actual story in Yeah. So th- maybe they'll actually build on that and actually make it more of an event event rather than just a thing. Maybe not like with a welfare or anything, but, you know, l- just a little bit more um story to munch on. But I feel like it might be another Gilfest. Okay. All right. So, yeah, like I said, it's going to be busy. But we'll talk yeah, about some busy. stuff. Uh, so we're wrapping up. I will throw out there for our patrons. Uh, and not only if you're not a patron, not only could you join us live normally most weeks if you're back at a sufficient level, but we're running a poll right now for the topic. There's about a week left. If you support us at the five and up level, you can join in, and some of you haven't. That's okay. You don't have to vote. Just you can. But uh, currently we're running Teach Me Omega Sensei. The four topics are what do you know about Grand Servants? What is a singularity? What is the Moon Cell? And what are Mystic Eyes? Which is a relatively late edition. Uh, currently with about a week left, uh, Mystic Eyes are winning by a couple of votes they've got over 50 percent which is interesting so uh maybe it'll be mystic eyes in a week or two that's a funny idea Lerte. we're gonna we're gonna stop doing liz for halloween but we're gonna make it liz fest now she's finally gonna get to do her idol show uh but yeah i don't think i mentioned this but i'm sad that i didn't actually get a music festival summer yeah the a lot of people are kind of confused by the la uh not the la the um the las vegas thing yeah because Obviously, while that is very quote unquote summery because there are like hotels with big pools, it's in the desert, so it's super fucking hot. But it's a vacation kind of thing. Yeah, know? it's a vacation thing, not ne- not necessarily a, like. I mean, I would say I would not go there in summer because yeah. of those things we mentioned. But it'll be interesting. That said, I don't know. I guess because they said that they usually they do their research like you know nine to twelve months ahead of time, so probably. Probably in the fall or winter, Nasi went to went to L.A. So I don't know to do, uh, not L.A. to Las Vegas to do the do the study. Which, by the way, they said they did last year for how uh, Hawaii too was they they took the writing team out to Hawaii to actually check it out and do some research. That's another thing. That, by the way, Nasi <laughs> did he mentioned like kind of the breakdown for writing servants, um, which is like they figure out a rough idea for a heroic spirit. The scenario writer and developer takes like a couple of weeks to do research, which is cool. So all you people who are like, oh man, they don't do any fucking research. No, they do. They take this seriously. And that's why you often see lots of little uh, anecdotes and cool stuff in there. And often why they dig deeper than just what pop culture says about those characters, right? Um, And then they kind of get with the art team and stuff. Yeah, no, that was the thing that they explicitly said. Like, they were originally planning Raiko maybe as a male character, uh, but Takeuchi burst in and was like, what if Raiko was a girl? Uh, and they were like, and Natsu was like, no, Takeuchi-san, stop. Uh, <laughs> apparently that's their relationship, is is Natsu is constantly telling Takeuchi to stop, and he's like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to draw a new saber. He's like, no. No, yeah, it up. Um, But then the researcher found out about the whole Ushi Gozen thing, which was like, Oh, well, we can make that a really weird and overly complex thing. And also, Raiko can draw uh, giant Raiko titties. So it worked out. But yeah, um, though they do say they like to do this, um, that there is a reason why gender flips and stuff happen is because naturally the histories and legends are usually male dominated. So that's why they've historically done a lot of gender flips is because they want to try and keep a more even gender ratio. At I mean, least that's what Nasu says. Things. Like, I don't, I don't know if like Delightworks and marketing leans more on waifus, but as a writer, Nasu is like, we gotta keep some more gender parity, so we sometimes have to flip, uh, you know, flip agendas yeah, to keep our our level up. If I remember correctly, last time I counted, which was quite a few servants ago, but still probably maintains. Um, I think FGO has about like twenty five to thirty percent more females than males at the moment. Yeah, maybe and some of that's probably alternates too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which Nasu, by the way, talked about their philosophy for doing summers. It was like, if we can't like do an actual alter or another like different take, we'll consider them often for a summer for like a lot of the FGO originals because that'll be like that's a new way we can approach a character kind of thing. Uh, but let's see, because we just added a whole bunch of servants. So I mean, let's see. Out of our seven, we've got one, two, three. Most of them are female. 
Yeah, it, but it's it's a player. it's a three four. Sp- uh, no, actually, it's a it's a four three split because you've got. Well, it's a four four oh, okay, split if you count Da Vinci, but the new bronzes, for instance, that's you've got Jason, uh, Paris, Chen Gong, and Bart, and then for females, you've got Salome, Charlotte, and Gareth. Gareth oh, I guess being a gender because... flip. Oh, okay, yeah. So actually, yeah, it is more male. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've gotten a lot of males lately, too. So I think yeah, I think they're like they're kind of swinging back and forth. People are still screaming about their summer males, though. Yeah, I mean, like I've said, I. They probably could do some stuff to actually go there, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, like, this is the thing, like, much like with Caldea Boys Collection, is like, I can't be mad about raid-ups for limited dudes, though. Like, I can't be mad at another Merlin raid-up. It's a fucking Merlin raid-up. Like, I-, I personally find it hard to be like, oh, gosh, they could have made a real summer Merlin. I don't think they would, though, right? Like, well, like that, that's kinda... my thing is, is like the only reason for a I can understand for a summer male servant rather than costumes is just for something to change up the meta. Yeah, I guess if you it... wanted to like, if you really wanted to make a servant <laughs> different and Sorry. stuff and do new things, but at the same time, also like they said, they're trying really hard to make every servant kind of shine in their own way through like rank ups and stuff. So, like, if for instance you were like, oh, they really could have given. Siegfried a new character and that could have been they could have done a different him and he could have been cool yeah, they'd like they prefer to, to like him. buff him through rank ups and stuff yeah because like when you get the costumes that means you don't have to worry about the level ups you don't have to worry about the skill ups you get like you get a new costume and you do so, get slightly just... different voice lines and stuff yeah so i don't, so, I don't know, like i said it's I, like I obviously know. some people are like you know the the work isn't quite the same sometimes it is sometimes it's not I'm yeah. I'm very curious, like Nasu saying that like characters who can't get alters, like that's like it's interesting that this is like they want to explore certain characters this way with their summers, but summers are also a joke. That said, I don't know. You never know when that summer Astolfo is gonna gonna hit you like a like a twenty yeah. ton hippogriff. Because uh, well, I can't really say that none of the servants have like anything to do with their actual lore, but. But a lot of time. them are definitely very weird and jokey. Like, yeah. like Mordred having Pridwin because somebody was like, so in some versions, this is a shield, but in other versions, it's a boat. So let's make it a boat shield and it's a surfboard. Yeah. Like, uh, Lancer Raiko is basically wielding, like, um, the lance. Yeah, she's wielding Indra's, uh, Vajira because, like I said, Nasu is a lunatic when it comes to syncreticism. Yeah. So es- establishing, any... by the way, that Arjuna and uh, Raiko are actually literally related. <laughs> Just to confuse the shit out of everybody. Um, I'm trying to think of any other summer servants that have like actual um, deepest lore tie-ins. I mean, like, so some of them, there's like personality changes. Like you can get summer characters who are actually more free and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you do, if you do like slightly different my room dialogue, you can actually do that with costumes anyway. Because like, I think that like, yeah, mostly I, th- I think mostly costume like- jolter is like completely different dialogue most of the time too. So, I don't know. Like uh, Q Hime and um, um, Nita Chris, um, their MPs are based off of um, deepest lore. But... Yes, they actually use that opportunity to kind of give them their quote unquote real MPs kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Keo burns the bell specifically. Nita Chris actually does the thing that she's supposed to have done in the Legends before H.P. Lovecraft got a hold of her, which was she captures a bunch of people and drowns them in the Nile. Oh, that's right. Lothram did a good thing. Uh, BB gets to use, because she's evil, Summer BB gets to use her actual NP attack from uh, CCC, the game. Curse, uh, curse cutting cra- uh, cleanser with the crater. Oh, so I mean, Shawakamara has a thing about being trained by Tenkus. That is actually uh, Origin. I mean, yes, but also she kind of had reference to that anyway in her normal form. But oh, yeah. also her normal form is very bland kind of thing, right? Like, ooh, she's already great character-wise, and she's got a lot of characterization, but her, uh, her like, skills and stats and stuff are pretty middle of the road. I don't know. I, can you forget about Drunk Ushi Face? I can't. No. that's Like, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, personality-wise, but, like, as as a... As a as a playable servant, she is. I mean, she still hasn't gotten her animation updates, so like, she's still pretty vanilla as a launch servant. Like, she got plenty of attention in a lot of things, but still, like, I could see them like, let's bust out oh. a carefree and casual Ushi. Oh no, that's I remember now. Fucking um, 
Shimazaki, Nobunaga, and all of them, they were on the fucking, um, um, they were on the Babylonia panel, because they actually showed off, like, um, they showed off, um, models for Ushiwakimaru, Leonidas, and, um, Benke. And people were talking about Ushiwakimaru's design. Mm-hmm. Which is gonna be very interesting to see animated, for reasons. They're gonna have to go through those, like, I bet her, her, parts of her costume are basically gonna have to be rigid. <laughs> no, it's um, very oddball. They kind of, yeah. like, retroactively with Raiko, they kind of made it, like, uh, that's a, that's a, um, uh, a Minamoto thing, is, like, they're very, they got some very weird ideas about costuming. But no, like, I think, and, while Nasu said that, like, oh, characters we can't necessarily do other alternates of, at the same time, like, there could obviously be a fully adult Ushi. They could do the famed Saber Raiko that they allude to with Lancer. Like, some of these characters, or some of these characters are alters, you know, but yeah. at the same time, it is, it does seem like they want to, they want to use it as an excuse to have less serious, fun characters and to kind of take a look at their characterization in different ways. I'm super glad I got cast to go, though, because I do want that cast to go. Yeah, I do. I got that guy, too. That's going to be fun next year. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, honestly, I tell people, like, if they decide just to do costumes, like, like, I'd be okay with that. Like, honestly. I, I'm like, I don't know. I love, we're, we're really just starting to get into costumes. So, uh, yeah. you know, we haven't, we haven't gotten able to get in Mavis costume yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to be there. I actually managed to roll her before the event came out, despite the fact that there's a video of me blowing out all of my Jolter savings because I got Jolter on the first ten pull. Like I, 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 it wasn't a super lot, but I fired quite a few ten rolls off at Maeve's raid up banner, and then I got her off raid up on Valentine's. So that's pretty interesting. I wonder. I wonder if that means the summer one will come home. Probably not, because summer fucking hates me. Uh, (laughs) I'm but anyway, twelve, twelve mamas. Like I said, this is gonna this is gonna be the there'll be an FGO Fez like in there so for clickbait, but also the great Raiko blew out twenty nineteen. Uh anyway, anyhow. What is my user? Can I fit uh you're mamas? burnout right now. Beast of twelve mamas? That sounds right. You can probably fit that. Uh but let's see. So let's let's do the actual wind down. Um Did you get around to watching case files? I mean I can you want since case files aired and we got both episodes now. Yeah, we can touch on it. I was like, did you actually get around to watch? Because when we when we were on WhatsApp, you hadn't watched it yet because you'd literally just woken up. So yeah, no, I watched it. Uh, so we wanted to kind of like talk about these two parts together. Um, yeah, because they are. It was an actual two part story. I liked this a lot. This was pretty good. Um, because you get that kind of like mystery back and forth, and they have the big fucking exposition scene at the end. Uh, Waver, Waver does the thing where he gets everybody to come to the library, and he's like, let me explain the mystery to you. <laughs> Here's what the fuck happened. For my first witness, it's I weird call ass shit. this fucking fairy. <laughs> and then he's like, the whole thing was a trap. The murderer was the dead guy. His weapon, the fucking workshop. And I'm like, oh my god, you're killing it, Waver. Um, speaking of killing it, also, by the way, did you see Waver shooting his little fucking beams? Yeah, he had his little finger guns gun. Well, it was a Which finger his, gun. It's his but- actual animations too. It's his attack animation from FGO is one of the beams, but like he's way yeah. less cool doing it like this. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Well, well you got to remember, Waver and FGO is way stronger. Well, yeah, than Waver and FGO Waver. is pa- is fused with a heroic spirit, so he gets to do actual magic. But like that was yeah. hilarious. He's just awkwardly sitting there going pew pew. He's trying real hard. He's a lord, don't you know? <laughs> uh. Also, they they very cleverly keep Renes out of it entirely because her mystic eyes are freaking out. So, so Termo has to literally hold her up, which is kind of interesting. But um, um, uh, I've completely forgotten her name. But Glasses McJapanese Lady, yeah, was pretty interesting. Uh, her doing stuff, kind of showing you what the policies department is like. Uh, like again, I said this before. I say again, I'm real glad we did. You did the um, teach me a mega oh, sensei. Yeah, what is no. the mages association? Super, super helpful. <laughs> um, and mystic guys will probably be helpful this month. And I think that's why people are picking it because there was a couple of different mystic guys in here. Um, oh yeah. Also, I was su- again super, super shocked. It must be because that stuff happened earlier in the volumes we're not covering. But they were just like, no, it's fucking King Arthur's spear. I'm like, what? You just gonna you're just gonna tell people that? 
Like, I kind of figured they wouldn't be too hard, yeah. because now I can say that that's Gray's NP in FGO, so, uh, spoilers. But, like... I'm wondering, like, honestly, I'm wondering if Gray's VA went and got some voice coaching from a uh, Kawasuni said. Because the way she says, um, Ranga Midian... I mean, I'm exactly. not entirely sure that wasn't Kawasumi. <laughs> like, that would be thematically appropriate if they did that, too. But yes, no, you're right. They did no, some... No, but the way... They did some the kind of something said, on um, where it sounded very similar. Yeah, like... Like, inflection-wise, it was, like, almost identical to how, um, Lance Artoria says it. Yeah, so I'm... I'm there was definitely some, like, study there if they didn't actually do, like, some, some weird yeah. video clipping. Um, but we get to see... Uh, Ron We get to see Ron actually fired... You know the whole pillar of light thing. They do some. They do some cool effects. They literally just reveal what the Mystic Code is. They're like, okay, it's actually a spear. We're protecting it. We're gonna use it to blow up the fairy portal. Oh, it didn't work. Shit. Uh, and then, uh, uh, alas, poor, poor, uh, Wills. We hardly knew ye. He was a cool dude. He made knives out of words, <laughs> which I loved. Um, but no, he got to go be with his fairy bride in the fairy lens. Which was uh, that, an interesting I answer. Is, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but <laughs> yeah, well, he was okay with it. I um, mean, this 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 is um this is um England. Yeah, they um, they're literally they're... in Upland in in Upland Britain fighting the Wild Hunt, which is great. Oh yeah, again, Wild Hunt also on point with um Arthur. Oh, I no, like I'm, sure, they... I'm sure the writers because we're still in the anime only episodes. I'm st- sure the writers of this were like studying the fucking notes, writing these scripts. Yeah, you know, they're talking about um, author and how the trip to analog is, like, also an analog to the trip to the underworld, and it's mm-hmm. all like, like, God, this is some deep lore shit going on right here. Yeah, no, I and love these been... I love these episodes because they very naturally uh, move through those things. Uh, yeah, Kyrie was back, go Lion. He was cool. He was a cool bro. He is being, he is a cool bro. Like, holy shit. He's your big daddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's way better at fighting than poor Waver. Though, I I love that he's, he still busts out his mercenary. He's like, hey, Mr. Lord, are, 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 basically he says, are these hours billable? And Waver's billable like, the policies. yeah, put the bill to policies. She admitted it was her fault. And before he's like, I want advanced payment. He's like, how much? He's like, give me a cigarette. I'm like, oh, you smooth motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was some there was some interesting exposition. We got a lot of a lot of details on characters, backstory stuff. So I've heard it confirmed Adachino. at least by the comments that um the series is only going to be thirteen episodes, which I find super interesting. We're probably gonna have a very fast moving plot in the last six or so then. Well, that's a, like apparently like uh, this is something that they definitely um um mentioned is um the end of this is basically um Adashino, which I'm pretty sure is the Japanese lady, I don't know, just clicked. Basically found some papers, like, alluding to right. the Rail Zeppelin, which was yeah. a train in which Mystic Eyes are traded. Yes. So we're so... we're leading into the, the actual plot, and then that will just be the last half of the series, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, it's in, uh, But also, it's not necessarily, the, like, the complete Case Files story, so maybe they'll leave it open to be future seasons of more Case Files arcs. Like, if I remember correctly, I think Case Files has, like, ten volumes. Yeah, we're done. only doing five and six, I think. I think that was the numbers. There's only two of them. Um, and we're apparently squish, we might be squishing them together a little bit because we've constantly had that question like, how many episodes are they going to take? Um, and honestly, I mean, like, if that's the episodes they think they need to take, that's clearly they think they can do it because they would have had the full amount, right? Like, hey, by the way, wait, question. When did fucking the, um, Case Files collab run? Was that like early spring? It was in Golden Week. Golden Week. Hang on a second, because uh, that's what Nasu said. He he's got everybody all at Twitter because people were asking about more Tsukihime stuff, and will Tsukihime ever interact with Fate? And he's like, I don't like the Tsukihime and the Fate universes to to come together. But and then the interviewer was like, But what about like Fate Zero and other stuff, like a collab event? He's like, Every year at Golden Week we hold a collab event. Please look forward to it. Thumbs up. And every, everybody's like, Oh my God, Tsukihime collab is coming. Well, I well now I know why they fucking did the case files um collab um because um the final book of um case files was May seventeenth. Yeah, that's right. It did it did finish this year, so that probably makes yeah. sense why they were like, "There's a big deal." Yeah. 
So, all right, that's cool. A, yeah. Also, still, yeah, uh, Dashino, uh, Aniplex, still, give me, give me, give me the translations. Give, give me. Apparently, someone can read them somewhere because people talk about what happens in them. Yeah, I don't know, but I, like I read them, I read light novels. Yeah, but yes, no, we 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 will buy dead trees. Yeah, but all right. Anyway, um, I also read some of the manga. Like I saw when that first started coming out, I saw some images, but that was cool. But anyway. Uh, we're at over two and a half hours, so we really need to wrap up. All right. I mean, we don't really need to wrap up, but we need to wrap up. So we talked about case files. It was cool. We will see what this week's episode is like. Uh, I have seen there's apparently going to be some some cute gray in this episode. They've shown some previews. Uh, we will move on. So that's about everything. Hope everybody had a fun time, both live and the archive going up on YouTube or the audio going up for patrons. Uh, so I will go ahead and say, since we're uh, wrapping the fuck up, that's right, it's wrap the fuck up, senpai. Um, pretty basic stuff, which is, hey, if you're on YouTube and you like this episode, give it a like. If you uh, have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And, uh, of course, if you are new here and haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to make a run for 2K subs. That'll probably be your next live episode I believe in you. we get there. Um, so the speaking of believing, uh, you have all vastly disappointed me. Uh, last week's episode has not hit 5,000 views. So, try harder, audience. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I put the blame all on them. Uh, hey, even if you're already subscribed, also considering that bell for notifications, so you always know when we post a new episode, because sometimes posting is weird. And like it says at the front of the show, and we've said before, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and get lots of other things. Uh, you can get the audio version of every episode downloadable for as little as a dollar a month, and it's a great way to continue supporting us. So uh, that's about everything. Next week, we'll tell you about stuff and things, as always. So, uh, we'll be seeing you. Yep. Please donate to the Get Lucky Made Altar today. Yeah, just, uh, play some Sarah McLaughlin in there. Yep. Fade to black. Fade to black and white. All right, we out.